We get it. After you've been in an accident, you deserve clear, risk-free advice to help get you back on your feet. You deserve an advocate. This is The Monty Show, the truth in sports talk streaming. When you want unbiased opinions about your favorite team without the spin, all you have to do is find The Monty Show, streaming live and available 24 hours a day, seven days a week on YouTube. And now, here's Monty. Hey, hey, The Monty Show, live on your YouTube machine. Happy Tuesday morning. Uh, NCAA tip-off Tuesday morning. Right here on the Monty program. Hey, Hi, Jake. Hey, Monty. Hi, buddy. Hey, Monty. Really average to see you. Yeah, you too. It's great. Um, uh, a lot of expensive golf that was pretty crappy this weekend. Jake's never heard of major cities in the U.S. He's never heard of Arlington, Virginia. That's not. That's, Arlington. That's he's not never a city that heard, heard of, of Arlington, Virginia. I know it's not a city you've Come heard on. of. I know you it's have not. It's not even on the list. I know you have not. Jake has a list that he's all fired up about about cities that are the most expensive to live in in this country, where the advocates, the best injury attorneys in the business will cover you when somebody runs a red light and hits you, when somebody makes an illegal U-turn and hits you, uh, when you get hurt at work and your your job's telling you, oh, we're going to give you back pay, just to sign right here real quick on the uh, ambulance ride over. Yeah, the advocates are the best injury attorneys in the business, period, point blank. I say it every single day on this show. And listen, if you get hurt at work today, please call the advocates. Get online. Chat with an injury attorney for free. You have nothing to lose. The advocates are going to tell you, hey, your company's doing this right. This is exactly the, the way it should be done. Okay, cool. What did you lose? Nothing. Nine times out of 10, though, your insurance company, your workman's comp attorneys, your those guys are not working for you. They're working for your company. They're working for your insurance company. You need somebody fighting for you just as hard to get you every penny you deserve as your insurance companies and your employers fighting to keep every penny they can away from you. Get to the advocates where you never pay a penny to work with the best injury attorneys in the business seat because you don't pay the advocates unless and until they win your case at theadvocates.com. Jake, are you excited about the NCAA tournament? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I it's nice that it's here. You know, I, I, I think it's, it's You're a not. fun Just time say every no. year. Just say no. I'm more excited about baseball. I am. I, sorry. Sorry. Just say to, you're not, not. Just say not, that you hate to, good things. Not to, you know, ruin your guys' day, but, but yeah. You I mean, hate, you hate beautiful flowers. Yeah. You hate you hate cute babies. Uh huh. You hate puppies. Uh huh. You hate dessert. Uh, like no, all of the dessert, things that actually. all the That's things that are that. clearly all the Fat. things that are good. You know, you hate in this. Right. Thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why are you not excited about the tournament? Uh, I, I, it's not that I'm not excited. I just I, I I'm not a college basketball like obsessor naturally. It's not ever been my first sport or like my. First thing that I'm like, man, really, really got to watch, uh, you know, Moorhead State try to find LSU or whatever the oddball matchup. Why is Moorhead first, State first round, bro? Like, I, you know, like, I, you know, and, and uh, I don't know. I'll be more excited about it when we get to the Elite Eight. I'll be more excited about it when we start getting down to it. But, you know, looking at, like I'm looking at the bracket last night and I'm like, man, like. I guess the East in in the West are nice. I mean, I I I look at you know like we're gonna talk all about these different teams. Like I, I think there's some clear opportunities for 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 some of these teams in the bracket. The team I'm most excited about uh, is Auburn, and I know that a lot of people are excited about them, but for good reason. You know, there's a lot of stats outside of the 13-4 matchup stat that everyone wants to reference that say Auburn should have a deep tournament run this year like the fact that you know under uh under bruce pearl they've done really good when they're not in quadrant one and they're in quadrant two this year uh they have an easy ass matchup against yale uh i think that yale has has not many ways to stop auburn i think auburn's going to be incredible incredibly physical with yale and i think broom's going to have a big night um you know but looking around looking around the tournament like <sighs> I, I feel like, you know, you look at the West, honestly, mm -hmm. like a team that no one's talking about. Lopes fan Gabe, you're going to love me. I think Grand Canyon's got an opportunity this year. I think Grand Canyon's got a path to to possibly surprise some people. 
coming out of that bracket. So yeah, I mean, am I excited about the tournament? Kinda, but it, I'm not like just man, say dude. no. I'm like, why uh, won't you just say you hate the NCAA? Because tournament? I enjoy. I don't hate the tournament. I enjoy it when we get to the Elite Eight. Once you get to the Elite Eight, now we're playing good basketball. Now we're playing like high level basketball that's not monotonous. You know, you know, half court nonsense. That's my problem with college basketball, man. It's really slow until you start getting big time matchups at the end of the tournament. So go ahead and say it. No, I'm not going to say it. Jake hates the NCAA the tournament. tournament. I love the NCAA tournament. I think that when you, I, I am not somebody that looks at brackets. Like the headline today about the Big 12, I think the Big 12 needs to win the NCAA tournament. And I think it's going to be very difficult. I think the best team this year right now um, is probably Iowa State. I would lean heavy to Iowa State in this tournament. I really like the way they're playing. I really like their matchups. But I think UConn's going to be very difficult to beat. I think it's going to be very almost impossible uh, for anybody to play as well as UConn is playing right now. But I think it is significantly important when we talk about the, the, the finances of college athletics that the Big 12 win the NCAA tournament. It is point-proving time. You have eight teams in this tournament tied with the SEC for most in the NCAA tournament. Prove a point and win this tournament. With the way that finances are changing in college athletics, I don't think that this is a, a an option to not have a Final Four team. I'm sorry, not to have multiple Final Four teams, multiple Elite Eight teams. Getting to the Sweet 16 anymore is not good enough. I think this is a huge moment in time for the Big 12. And I know that a lot of people want to talk about expanding the tournament, which we're going to get to here in a minute. But if you're the Big 12, it's all, it's all well and good that you want to expand the tournament. How about you win the tournament as it is currently constructed? And I think to have leverage, that's what you have to do. The only hammer that the Big 12 has on the Big 10 is that the Big 10 doesn't really field competitive basketball conferences year in and year out. At least they have not. Now, obviously, the way Oregon is playing, and I think Oregon is a dark horse in this tournament, there's no doubt, adding Oregon to the Big 10 only helps the Big 10's basketball product. But there is no doubt that if you are the, the, the Big 12, I think you have to win this tournament I think you have to add Gonzaga at all costs. I think this is a critical, critical moment in time for the Big 12 when it comes to leveling the financial table. It is not an option to tank in this tournament. Yeah, absolutely not. And I think that, you know, the 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 Big 12, you know, like you said, I mean, it's their only leverage point. And I, and I think that if you if you can't say that you, you know, are dominant on the basketball court, you know, and you win these big tournaments, obviously this is the biggest tournament. But you know, if you can't say that you're 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 the dominant force in college basketball, what makes you any better than the ACC? What makes you better uh, than really anybody else? Because you're not making the most money, and at that point, you wouldn't be uh, you know dominating football or basketball. And I think that's the hard part when you look at at the tournament. It's like, yeah, theoretically, like when you look at look at you know again the bracket on paper, like a lot of Big Twelve teams have a have a pretty a pretty, you know, what I would call straightforward path, right? I mean, you look at their path and you say, hey, they should win some of these games. But but ultimately, uh, it comes down to it, it comes down to actually getting the job done. And and I think your point about getting to the Sweet 16, that not being as big a deal anymore, it's true. Because if you're the best basketball conference in the country, you really should be loading up the Elite Eight. You really should be, you know, again, doing what the SEC does in football, right? Which yeah. is having... Again, if you just take percentages, right, having two SEC teams in the in the four team format at the end of the year, that's domination, bro. That's absolute positive domination. So if the Big Twelve can have, let's say, four in the Elite Eight, that's the kind of numbers you're looking for. Because ultimately, if you have four in the Elite Eight, your odds of winning the national championship in college basketball are really good. Yeah, I uh I look at these like you look at the Midwest. You, obviously, right out of the gate, TCU is going to run into Purdue. And I think TCU is a good story. But TCU also has to get by Utah State, who, who's a pretty game basketball team. Mm -hmm. So right there, I think you're you're looking at Gonzaga versus McNeese. Um, is anybody worried that Kansas is going to get to Gonzaga and lose? Because I think the way that Bill Self has run that team this year. And then there's, there's that squad I warned you about. Oregon's going to win some games. I think if you are Creighton, you're staring down the barrel at the Ducks because I think the Ducks present Creighton with their one of their most difficult games. 
Um, I think you you look at the South, and there's a lot of really hefty matchups there. Obviously, Houston's the the behemoth there, but I don't think Nebraska's a gimme game for Houston in the in the second round. Although I think they would win, but at that point, aren't they running into Wisconsin? Because I think I think Wisconsin's better than Duke. Mm-hmm. I think Wisconsin will beat Duke, and I think you're gonna you're gonna wind up with a Houston Wisconsin regional that could be really good. That could be a really good game. Um, obviously, pew pew, rock yes, up, bitches. Yes, Texas Tech has a chance to to go to the the Final Four. They are a Final Four quality team. Now, if you look at what they have ahead of them, NC State. NC State's one of those teams that ruined the NCAA tournament for some people because they took a spot they probably should not have taken by winning uh, their tournament. You look at you look at Kentucky and Oakland. Um, I am really hoping we get Kentucky and Texas Tech. Yeah, because I think that could be a hell of a game. I think we're looking at 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 that point. I think you're looking at Marquette and Texas Tech, which could be an absolute slugfest. So you can kind of see how if you're the Big 12, like looking at this part of the bracket, the South, like it would be really unfortunate to have, you know, let, let, let's say Texas and Houston run into each other trying to get into the final four, right? It would be unfortunate for stuff like that to happen, but that very well could happen to you, which is why I say it's important to continue to have uh, the most teams or tied for the most teams this year in the tournament because you have situations like this. And and I completely yeah. agree, you know, Texas tech, you know, running into Kentucky, that's a big opportunity. Anytime the big 12 gets a chance to play the ACC or the sec, you need to win those ball games. Yeah. You need to. Yep. And then out West, I mean, I, I think Alabama is a very interesting team. I think Alabama is a very, very interesting team. I have zero faith in my Tar Heels this year. I think they need to turn this roster over. This is not a number one seeded team. I think this is, I think Arizona has an argument to be, should have been, um, you know, and if, if we're being honest, I think Baylor, Baylor's probably better than North Carolina and Arizona. Yeah. I think Baylor probably, Baylor's a team to watch here, but I, I think we're ultimately going to wind up with Michigan State and Alabama because I have zero faith in North Carolina. Mm-hmm. Zero faith. I think Baycott is not a great player. I think he's one of the most overrated players. I think R.J. Davis is every ounce of a superstar. Uh, but Armando Baycott has that ability for North Carolina to just piss you off in, in big games. And I don't think they're I don't think they're built for tough. Right. Uh, but I love Dayton. I think Dayton, Arizona is going to be a phenomenal game. By the way, Arizona doesn't have an easy pass with Long Beach State because Long Beach State isn't laying down for anyone. Um, I think it, it, we are ultimately going to wind up. There's a chance we get, we, cause I think Baylor's got a pretty easy route. I think Baylor's better Agreed. than Clemson. I think there's a chance and it's a slim one. I think there's a chance we could see Dayton and Baylor. Um, and if that, if that happens, boy, that's going to be, that's going to be an incredible Baylor. I think Baylor's good, but I think Dayton's that team that can beat anybody that's sitting in front of them. Yeah, they're they're definitely that problem team in, in that part of the bracket. Like, I, I think that Baylor Bay, – see, again, this is what I'm talking about. Baylor should easily get in, like, theoretically speaking, on paper should clearly get to get to the end of that portion of the bracket. I would but, agree. But, I, but, like, looking at this, like, remember, Arizona is still technically a Pac-12 team. Technically, this is the last year the Pac-12 has representation, obviously. Yeah. Uh, so next year, you can kind of start to see how, hey, Arizona would be the Big 12's ninth team into the into the tournament. So just keep that on, in the back of your head when you're looking at this. Like, hey, there's going to be more teams from the Big 12 than anyone else, in my opinion, next and, year. And I also think there's a, there's a team that we're going to we're going to overlook and i i think that BYU and Illinois could be one of the most entertaining games of this tournament cuz Illinois and you don't have to want to but it, you better believe that Illinois is legitimately a national championship contender and i have not been able to say that since Kendall Gill and Kenny Battle you guys don't even know who that is 
But my point is, Illinois is a legit contender this year at a three seed. BYU and Illinois are going to be very interesting. Uh, I think you are going to, to watch Iowa State. And I think Iowa State's road is pretty smooth and paved. Yeah. They would have to get by, I think they're going to have to get by Drake, who's going to beat Washington State. They would have to get by BYU or Illinois. And I think it's Illinois. Iowa State versus Illinois is going to be epic. I think I, I think Illinois will probably win that game. And I think you're probably looking at UConn and Illinois coming out of that side. But the one team that I think that we could potentially be overlooking in all of these brackets really could be Creighton. Creighton, I know, Creighton's going to have uh, Monty. to. Monty, it's Creighton. I, I get it. Listen, man, I, I totally understand it. But if you look at all of these brackets, like you look at the South, like who is, is Houston, like as the number one, is Houston clearly the best team in the South? I, mean, I think that's a really good bracket. Marquette's really good. I think Houston has a bunch of firepower. Best is hard, is it to me, you know, is a hard label to put on teams in these situations because again, you know, if, if Houston were to lose to Marquette, nobody would be surprised. That's not a bad loss. That's a, a, a hard-fought game. But, again, Houston is a one seed for a reason. And I think Houston uh, showed us last year what they're capable yeah. of. And clearly, Houston has big-time expectations this year. No question about it. Marquette is a team that obviously has heritage, obviously – in the conversation most years, but yeah, I would expect Houston to get through that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I look at the West bracket and there's some, but there's some ball clubs out here, folks. I think this is going to be amazing. Obviously the first four Colorado Boise state. And I know this is going to sound wild. I think Colorado has a chance to go to the sweet 16. I think Colorado is that team that you don't want to run into. Now, there's a couple in here. I think Virginia's really good, and I think Colorado's really good. And Prize Picks got both of these teams all over the place. Yeah, I'm telling you, I think that that Virginia and Colorado have a chance to really shock some folks. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see how how all this plays out. But again, I'm just going to tell you, I think this is a critical moment in time for Big 12 basketball. I think when you're talking about revenue, making a statement, trying to you know help yourself. I think this is huge, but I also think this question of should should we be looking at should we be looking at expanding the NCAA tournament to 80 teams? If you're the Big 12, the answer is obviously yes. But the thing that I can't get away from and the thing that's hard to argue is that when you look at North Carolina State and you look at UAB, and you look at Duquesne in the A-10, New Mexico in the Mountain, and Oregon in the Pac-12, just pissing people off all over college basketball. Right. And you look at, oh, Rick Pitino crying a foul about the Johnnies not getting in. <laughs> Do you know what conference tournament week showed us? That we don't need to expand the NCAA tournament. This is exactly what the NCAA tournament is supposed to be. It's supposed to be these teams that are crying about being on the outside in. Maybe you should have won that December game. Maybe you should have got maybe you shouldn't have lost that back to back on the road. And you wouldn't be on the bubble. Maybe maybe Italian restaurant sex machine Rick Patino may and I know this is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you shouldn't have tried to convince America that your team was really shitty in February, which is what he said. We're a terrible team. Well, people believed you and left you on the outside looking in. My bad. The NCAA tournament doesn't need to go to 80. I think it's great right where it is. If anything, I would I would say get rid of the 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 playing games. But it is what it is. Don't go to 80. Right. Don't go past 64. Well, and I think, you know, the that dynamic is what a lot of people, I think, skip over. That, you know, when it, it's been at 64 for forever. And I think that 
that having this dynamic at play where you have to win this game to mm-hmm. get in, just get into the tournament is huge. And and I think that, you know, how many every single year, how many borderline teams don't get in and say, oh, man, we got to yes. expand this and we should be in. And, you know, the Florida State ask argument, right? Like, hey, we should have got in. We got screwed. You know, how could you keep us out? And it's like, yeah, dude, that's part of the process. That's and I tend to agree in basketball uh, specifically, like it is pretty clear who should be in and who should not. And and I just I don't know. I understand why the Big 12 wants to expand it more money. I totally get it. But that doesn't mean that 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 is just a, a clean cut positive in every single category as to why we should expand. It's going to expand. It's going to just understand that. It is going to expand. I don't think it has to, but it's going to. There's too much money to be made. Yeah. And if you're the Big 12, you need it to expand because I can see a Big 12 league where you're getting 10, 11 teams into the tournament. If you add Gonzaga, you have a chance to get 12 teams yeah. into the tournament. You look at the teams coming in, Utah basketball is clearly on the rise. They're in the NIT this year, and I think a coaching change might be coming. But Utah is clearly, I think, a program that is disappointed and is not going to stand pat and not take part in the tournament. I think Colorado very clearly had one of its best years. You look at Arizona and you look at at, at Arizona State. Arizona State, Bobby Hurley, you're an embarrassment. And your wife is not nice as a person, in my opinion. She's not very polite. Anyway, <laughs> and your kids park on other people's lawns. Right. And not lawns, they're, you know, your zero scape. But that's not the point. Yeah, your rock pile. Yes, we did some business with Bobby Hurley's wife, and her kids love to park in people's yards with their trucks. The point is, listen, friends, uh, I think the Big 12 has a chance to get 10, 11, 12 teams into this tournament once expansion hits. Yes. And if that's the case, you should be expanding the tournament. Yeah. I don't. I, you should be pushing to expand the tournament. I don't want to see it expand. Well, and depending on when it expands, I think next year the Big 12 is looking at 10 or 11 teams. And again, if you just consider, you know, the additions. You have eight now. Yeah, I mean, if eight now and then, you know, you consider the additions. If teams like, you know, Arizona, Arizona State, you know, yeah, obviously Utah, those teams can continue to get into the tournament. You're looking at 11 already, right? I mean, yeah. you're, so, so to me... Yeah, and obviously same logic for the Big Ten, right? With the with the teams that they've added, but but I think that the 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 big thing here is that the, the Big Twelve has to find a way to take control of basketball the way that the SEC and Big Ten have yes. taken control of football. And the only way to do that is to win and win more than anybody else. So yeah, you might want to win some ball games. All right, who do you have winning the NCAA tournament? Mm. Let's go in the comments section. Who do you have winning? I think you, if you pick anybody other than UConn, you hate the NCAA tournament. So go ahead, pick somebody other than UConn. Uh, yeah, let's go with uh, <laughs> Oakland out of the South. That'll look really good. Oakland out of the South. Uh, you want to talk <laughs> about upsets? <laughs> no, I'm not picking Oakland. So Jake just said that Oakland's going to win the NCAA tournament. Um, I don't know if they can get by uh, Western Kentucky. Uh, but if they can get by Western Dude. Kentucky, it seems like a pretty straightforward yeah, pretty path straight to winning. Run, man. Um, I think, yeah, the East is tough, bro. The East is going to be tough, and and that's my concern for UConn. UConn should win the East, but well, they're better than Stetson, FAU, and Northwestern. Mm-hmm. They are better than Yale, Auburn, UAB, San Diego State. I think Auburn's very interesting. Mm-hmm. Bruce, per- what Bruce Pearl has done at Auburn is put them in a position where they believe that, and I think he said, I saw him on CBS Sports talking about how he put a nine-game winning streak in front of them and said, we need to win nine games in a row. And I think that's exactly right. You need to win nine games in a row. Well, And, and, and they've won, what, three of them, I guess, already, four of them already. Their style of play is why I like Auburn. They're not a team that is going to be like, hey, man, we got to shoot the three well to win. They're a team that wants to be physical with you. Again, they want to get Broom at the elbow, going to his left, uh, at a, a, and taking high percentage shots. And I think if they do that, they can play with pretty much anyone. That's not to say they're going to beat UConn, right. 
right. they can play with anyone and be in the game. I think the East with Illinois, Iowa State, um, Auburn, again, I think UConn has the easiest road of anybody uh, to get to the the Sweet 16. Um, I think that is, that is, I mean, once you get to the 16, it's difficult, right? But they should be better than Auburn, Yale, UAB, San Diego State, Northwestern, and FAU. You you yeah. should expect them to go to the to the Elite Eight. And then I look at the bottom half of that and I say to myself, they're better than BYU. They're better than Illinois. Although I think that could be a real battle. I think they're better than Iowa State, who Iowa State is my sleeper team. Hey, you told you uh, you called it last weekend. But I think it's going to be really difficult. I did because I'm brilliant and I'm good looking. But I think it's going to be very difficult for them to to come out of that. Uh, here's a shocker: Stephen Smith is taking Iowa State. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe Who knew? it. Who I can't knew? believe it. Well, Write it down. Stephen Smith thinks Iowa State's going to win the tournament <laughs> and go undefeated next year in badminton, hockey, gymnastics, Correct the mundo. water polo. Horse polo. Horse polo. You know. Uh, Harry Austin. I went Easton, but UConn has to be the favorite. Spartan. No. See, Eric, your first Dude, comment. Bro. Your first comment, and you already <coughs> went to Idiotville. <coughs> Although I think you're probably going to beat North Carolina, but that's fine. Uh, Mike Smith. L.A. face with the Oakland booty. Okay. Okay. Is that Sean booty? Uh, Dakota Tubbs says Moorhead State. Yeah, Moorhead State. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are ridiculous. Houston, Arizona, St. Peter's. St. Peter's. Well, at least finally we got a serious answer with St. Peter's. In God's name, image, and likeness. Pairdue. You think Pairdue. If I look at all of the brackets, Pairdue, they're better than Utah State or TCU. Uh, is Pear do better than Gonzaga this year? They probably are. Is Pear do better than Kansas this year? I think Kansas has been so inconsistent. Yeah, which Kansas? <laughs> is Pear do better than Creighton? I don't think Purdue's better than Creighton. I think Tennessee is high at number two. I think you're going to wind up with. It's going to be interesting to see who Texas winds up with. It's gonna be interesting to see how. I, yeah, the, I, I Purdue's got a Purdue's got a decently easy route. Yeah, but we'll see. Um, Kim Coulter says Houston. Dakota says Houston. Okay, Mike Smith, hoping West Virginia gets a decent basketball coach this off season. Huggy Bear really screwed things up with his drunk ass. Sorry, did said, you say Huggy but Bear? He, Bob Huggins. It, it. How do you not? He again, he's never heard of Dallas, right. Texas. I know who Bob never, Huggins he's never is. Heard of I've Dallas, never heard Texas. of someone say Huggy Bear. He's God. Like he I, he doesn't know what he does. Forgive him. He he knows Please. not what he says. Okay. He knows he's been called Huggy Bear for about 50 years. Well, I haven't been around for 50 years, so. That's right. Nothing happened before 93. See, you're My catching bad. on. My bad. Um, I, did you guys see that Huggy said he wants to he wants to coach again? Mm, I'm sure and he does. He, you know, he's ready to coach. I'm sure you are. I'm sure you are. Uh, all right. Who's first in today, by the way? Mike Smith. Good morning, Mountain Mama. Uh, Harry Austin. Hello. Chad Carter. Hello. Dakota. Eh. Matt Ritson. Morning, Jake. Monty. Great show. Well, thanks. So did. Lil Jizzy. Good morning from Jizzy. <laughs> okay. Beyond brand. OG Gary. Well, it's madness time. Let's see who wins. Bailey Dietrich. Not Purdue. 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 I hate Purdue. I hate everything about Purdue. Drew Brees is just not very good at football. <coughs> um, You know. Yeah. What happened? Glenn Robinson Jr. is not on the team anymore? No hate Purdue. Nothing good ever came out of West Lafayette. Nothing. Some engineers, but who needs an engineer? You know? You know what I mean? Uh, Dakota Tubbs, I like Yiston, but just like last year, their depth worries me. 
Dear God, Ant-Man. What? I think the Anthony Edwards dunk is one of the most overrated dunks I've seen this year. <laughs> and Sports Center won't shut the uh, about it. <laughs> oh my God, Anthony Edwards dislocated his finger on John Collins's taint. Did you guys see this? Dunk? Oh, you missed the dunk. Let's play it again. And in case you just saw it once, let's play it again so you can see it 12 times right here on Sports Center. Brought to you by Anthony Edwards's dunk. Poor John Collins is taint. <laughs> <laughs> again and again dude come on man and it's, again it's a really good dunk, and again man. it is a really and good again like, and again there's no reason to hate oh look they just showed it again oh wait i'm sure oh you missed it turn on sports center it's the only thing they're showing dunk it's a, it's a good dunk john collins wasn't even facing him when he took off it's not like, oh, my God, the greatest dunk of all time. Anthony Edwards, did you see he hit his head on the scoreboard? He jumped so high. My God. <laughs> Just shut the – like, it's <laughs> – newsflash, dudes in the NBA can jump. Who knew? What? I'm so bricked up right now. Shut up. I'm tired of this. In, but when watching oh. it live, it was awesome. Oh, yeah. Wow. It was awesome. Dude, I pulled my pants down. Let's... Yeah, dude. Stay hard. Yep. Too much. Scott. Kim Coulter. Morning, guys, from Dorado Beach, Puerto Rico. <laughs> Dorado Beach. Ho, ho! Uh, playing Cocoa Beach uh, Golf Course this morning and El Conquistador tomorrow. Oh, El Conquistador, huh? Eat, eat your hearts out. Wreck them. Have fun. Hit him straight, dude. Hit him straight. We're going to talk about, we played two premium courses in Scottsdale. And we got to talk about that. Steven Smith, I believe that the committee wants some of the big 12 teams to fail to show they don't belong. Uh, okay, so conspiracy theory time? Yeah, or... why would the committee want the big 12 basketball basketball team? Infowars.com. That makes no sense. Yeah. Like, this is what we get. This was one of the best selection Sundays we've ever had because it was pure chaos, which is exactly what the NCAA tournament is supposed to be. What it should be. We don't, everybody should not get in. You have to earn your way in. Oh, but Monty, we, we're, our resume and our RPI and everything, you know, says we should be there. Look at Ken Palm. Yeah, fuck Ken Palm. <laughs> Get a life, Ken. <laughs> Get a life. Damn, bro. Probably too much. Rick Forrester, Houston all the way. Houston. Jimmy Otson, like number 16. Yeah, let's go. We've had 500 people view the show, and we only have 33 likes. Let's go, we you guys, if today? you're here. Huh? We, we doing it today? We're not doing anything today. Okay. Jerk. Why don't you fuck off? Yeah, exactly. Sir. Okay. Jake showed up this morning and chose violence. Uh, well, I don't know what you're talking um, about. Um, let's see. Dakota Tubbs, while well, Jake is showing his true colors every single day. Carl Adams, his usual positive self. Baseball is a dying sport. Well, there you go. Okay. Hope that, that rain cloud over your house doesn't flood. Um, Harry Austin, man, you have to question whoever raised Jake. How can you not be excited for March Madness? Okay, dude. I don't work at Home Depot. Let's... <laughs> Let's not spin this, okay? We're not spin cycling. Jake this. hates the NCAA tournament. I don't hate the NCAA Jake tournament. Jake hates puppies. I don't hate puppies. Jake hates women. That's right. Uh, I don't hate women. You know. Jake I, hates old people. Okay, that's true. Uh, I and how they want smell. The Elite Eight to get here. Once the Elite Eight gets here, we're in a good place. Jake hates dessert. What else is uh, Jake hates pretty flowers. <laughs> Jake hates women in bikinis. <laughs> <laughs> Jake loves a rom com. Jake's favorite movie is The Notebook. <laughs> oh, it's not. <laughs> no, it's not. Jake hates free things. Here I am. Uh, Arizona or Houston are my guesses, but it's a tournament, so I'm going to be wrong. We're all going to be wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Jake hates chaos in the NCAA tournament. 
Jake hates I sports. I just hate monotonous Everything. college basketball, bro. Everything. All right, here we are in Greensboro on a Tuesday night in December. Um, it is Wachachi State taking on Arlington, Texas, which Jake Monomayer has never heard of. Check him out on the Monty program. Okay, Mike Smith. Could never get into baseball. Always seems so boring to me. And that's, that's what fine. Jake says about the NCAA that's tournament. Fine. Boring as hell. That's fine. Can't get into it. Yeah. Not feeling it today. Yeah. Not feeling, feeling something it. else. Uh, Dakota Tubbs. Yes, Auburn is a hidden gem. Uh, Eric Wasikowski. When basketball is on watching hockey, March Madness is overrated. When basketball is on, I'm watching hockey. Okay. I mean, listen. It's probably you roll up the garage door before you start the car. Right. You know, you know, when basketball is on, I'm still watching hockey. March Madness is overrated. Okay. So, dude. Hey, dude. So, dude. Says, uh, Wazoo. Got my bracket in a, at, as a pizza Bro, okay. for years of free pizza. Okay. Connor Tulin. Good morning, Connor. Good to see you. Monty, I got bucked up last night. Let's, Let's go. go. Let's go. I had my buck shot yesterday. So got off the got out, got off the uh plane yesterday at eight, worked all day, like all that stuff. <phone rings> One o'clock yesterday afternoon, popped that buck shot, psh, powered me through. Life is good. Boom. Life is good, man. Telling you, Connor, hook it up with the bucked up. You guys. The other thing I'll say is if you are not taking creatine every single day, and I don't care if you're 15 or 37 or 57, Jake hates creatine too, by the way. Uh, if you're not taking creatine every day, you're not doing life right. I'm telling you right now. Um, Rick Forrester, Iowa State versus Houston in the finals. Ooh, I like it. I like it. I like it a lot. Um, Caleb Alamore. What's up, Caleb? I got a Houston, I got a Houston and Iowa State rematch. Houston winning that title. Iowa State's very good. I'm telling you, Iowa State is very, very good. Yeah. And what do you what are you doing a bracket? Jake's at, doing a bracket. Holy cow. Gary's Jake's doing bracket, a bracket. Dude. I'm looking at Gary's bracket. Oh, I thought you were doing a bracket. But he's you're not. taking St. Mary's over Grand Canyon. Now listen. Gary doesn't know anything like, about sports. Like, dude, I'm looking at this. Nothing. Y you've got Oh, excuse me. You've got UNC losing to St. Mary's. That wouldn't surprise me. I'm a North Carolina fan. And Damn. We're, uh, yeah. Wasikowski, Jake is uncultured. Says the fucking guy who's like, oh, hockey's on. I'm watching hockey over basketball. NCAA tournament sucks. Four more <laughs> years. Four more years. Let's go. Trump's a billionaire, but he can't pay his bond. All right, here we are. <laughs> Eric and Raleigh, hello. Steve Sapanic, hello. Jimmy Otson, or turn off Sports Center. Well, Thank you. See, Thank there's you. no golf on. Oh, so. look, the Anthony Edwards dunk is on again. Who knew? <laughs> look at me. Oh, look, Mel Kuyper commenting on. No, he's not the NFL draft. He's commenting on Anthony Edwards dunk. <laughs> Apologize to that man. Fucking assholes. Like, oh, no, Anthony. Are you a jazz? Dude, are you a jazz what? fan? Oh, my God. Dude. Did he dislocate a finger dunking on John Collins' dick? <laughs> I think he did. <laughs> Caught it on the areola. Could happen to anybody. <laughs> did happen to Anthony Edwards. Let's show you again right here on Sports Center. It is what it is. <laughs> like, stop. Are you at all surprised? No. <laughs> no. I'm not. It's a great dunk. I mean, it's not like there's anything NFL draft to talk about. Yes, let's have Mel Kuyper comment on Anthony Edwards' dunk again. <laughs> <laughs> like, why do we? I, I, it's the draft, Mel. Tell me how good Caleb Williams is going to be for the Bears so I know what, how, I'm like, how much tissue I need next season. When you draft Caleb Williams and he's a fucking bust because he went to USC. <laughs> Don't show me Anthony Edwards dunk again, you fucking pricks. Because it's garbage. <sighs> <laughs> you know. What are you going to do if the Bears draft Drake May, dude?
Just play the, play the George crying. <laughs> play the George crying meme. Oh, because at this point, at this point, I need it to be Caleb Williams. I need Caleb Williams I on that need wall. You on that wall. It parties in places you don't talk about. So stand post. <laughs> Either get in a shotgun or stand a post. Either way. I don't give a damn what color your nails are. I don't give a damn what Mel Kuyper thinks about Anthony Edwards' dunk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. That's an all-timer right there. All right. I feel better. Okay. All right. Monty mm -hmm. woke up this morning and chose crazy. I did. <laughs> I did. It's just annoying to me. It's a good dunk. I get it. Like, dislocate his finger on John Collins' forehead, bro. All-timer. Okay, cool. John Collins wasn't even looking at the guy. And you, I get it. You put your dick on his face. That's cool. His cock. Right. I, anyway. Macaque. <laughs> Oh my God! Uh, OG Gary, hey, did y'all see that Anthony? <laughs> 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 oh, Steve Stepanek. I wonder what Shaq thinks about that dunk. <laughs> We're gonna find out. The uh, I would with your wife. Uh, let's see, <laughs> Bailey Dietrich. If the Bears draft Drake May, it's Mitch Trubisky 2.0. Yeah. Force goes pop. Now it's turned into the Bears are terrible. Mm, hey, Monty, good Bears luck, suck, man. Do you guys Ew. understand my life? You understand? You know, I'm a Cubs fan. They, they did win both games we went to. We went to, they, they did win both games. Cody Bellinger yacked. I love it. Um, My guy, Seiya Suzuki, home run. Multiple. You know. Um, I'm a Cubs fan. That's the highlight of the season, spring training. Uh, I am a Notre Dame fan. Apparently, and I didn't know this, and I understand Notre that Dame are money. everybody's cutting back in college sports because of the money. Apparently, right. Notre Dame cut their basketball program. I was unaware of that. Uh, a lot. Yeah. Um, I'm a Notre Dame fan. Okay, cool. Uh, I have nothing to root for. Nothing. I'm a Chicago Bears fan. Point taken. I'm a Chicago Bulls fan. Again. Uh, the Blackhawks? Nope, not them either. Uh, Connor Bedard's cousin, who has 85 points in 30 games in the WHL. He'll probably end up in Minnesota with the Wild, who I hate. Um, um you know, right? I don't. What? What do I? What is good in my life? I am a, a Phoenix Suns fan. They don't beat anybody. What about the Chicago Fire? They. Do, I'm not sure. Like Chicago is on fire, and it was a good fire. Yeah. Like it burned the whole fucking town down. Like you know. it was amazing. But at the end of the day, the town was burned. Oh, you. You mean the soccer team? My. I thought you meant the Great Chicago Fire, where the water tower is the only. My bad. Right. Right. Uh, do you understand where I? This is my life now. This is my life now. Aaron Rodgers is going to be president. This is my life now. Oh, the Chicago sky. The sky. There you go. I mean, it's a beautiful skyline. I agree. Yeah. You know. You know. Yeah. Um, Rick Forster. Rudy. Ru no. Rudy Gobert is the worst contract in the MB. Oh, Rudy. Rudy Rudiger. Rudy Law. My One of my favorite baseball players as a kid. Okay. You know the funny thing about Rudy from Notre Dame? It was all a lie. Nobody turned their jersey in, dude. That was a Disney movie. <laughs> anyway, Rick Forster, the Bears suck. I hadn't heard that. <laughs> I mean, Baylor basketball, you mean the Baylor Bears. They're very good in basketball. I agree they suck at football. Right. Uh, OG Gary, I think Oak State James saw the Anthony Edwards dunk from his helicopter. I think he did. I think he did. John DeLon. Monty, you have no faith in Marcus Freeman. He can't count past 10. No, I have zero faith. Uh, Rudy from the Cosby show. Right. Nope. Not doing Bill Cosby today. I mean, he's probably wants to do me. The and, cack. You know. All right. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Uh, don't forget the daily uh, fantasy partner of the Monty show is Prize Picks. Won again last night on Prize Picks. Telling you guys, three of my last four, 
Okay. Do you already have action on the first four today? I don't because I'm not stupid. Well, I don't. What did you, you took action on the first? No, I was going to though. I was going to though. Okay, what are you looking at on the first? This uh, is a mistake. So let's <laughs> see. Let Can we do Call of Duty up. instead of the first four? Yeah. Do you know how difficult, you guys, it is to bet the first four? It is one of the, I'm pretty, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty certain that the the first four is one of the most profitable parts of the NCAA tournament for Vegas, for the boys in Vegas. And this is what I love about prize picks. I don't have to bet the game or the totals. I just got to bet players and combos. Bryce Harris from Howard. Ooh, point Caitlin guard. Clark. Caitlin Clark is 0. 0.5 points. But isn't that for Friday? That's for Saturday. Saturday, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm probably not. That's you know. that's awesome. 98% off right now. Uh, in the NBA, I, I am shocked. I am, I am over, I am again, over 300 bucks in my prize picks account. Yeah. Do you guys understand? I was down to, I think $7 a, a less than a week ago. I was at $7 in my prize picks account. Hey. That's how dry things had gotten, right? Like I needed lube badly. You needed lube. And I got it. It was awesome, dudes. Like I've I've been on a run. Anthony Davis, Anthony Davis. I I cannot tell you if you if you're on pri download the Prize Picks app. Use the promo code Monty and hey, Monty to get a hundred percent deposit matching. Let's play the NCAA tournament together. Prize Picks for the NCAA tournament is one of the best. Is one of the best. So let's look at first four in. Who do you, who do you who do you? Okay, so I got. <clears throat> excuse me. Bryce Harris from Howard, guard, uh, more than 15 and a half points. He's hit that in every, every game in the last five. And then I've got Neat Clifford <clears throat> from Colorado State on a demon uh, versus UVA for more than three and a half assists. Boy, that's tough. Um, I think, boy, these are some tough ones because Tyson Walker Tyson Walker, oh, why do we have to? Why are you doing this to me, Price? I'm not. No, I, I'm going to stay on today because if I don't stay on today, yeah, then you're asking for trouble. You're you're going to wind up getting yourself in trouble. Um, that's oh, Isaiah Stevens, um, Colorado State, uh, one and a half three pointers made. That's almost a gimme. That is almost a gimme. Well, that or Marcus Dockery for three pointers made, two and a half three pointers made for Howard. That's I could go probably, with that one. <clears throat> that's probably a good one. Yeah. And the other one today that I think is really good, and I don't know how many people have looked at NBA first half today Kyle Kuzma, 12 points in the first half. He's, he's playing Houston. I think that's a lock. I love that one. I took first team all fat ass sign Williamson, by the way. Zion Williamson He's not fat has anymore. cut down. Did you guys see Zion? Did you Dude. see what he said about losing weight, <clears throat> bro? And I never thought I would say this. Zion Williamson, I think, has turned a corner. He claims that seeing himself in the midseason tournament and getting embarrassed by the Lakers, he said it was humiliating for him to watch himself in the midseason tournament and not be able to perform. And he has dramatically lost weight. Yeah, they're saying it's 30 pounds <clears throat> that he's cut. And he looks like it. He looks like it. So I took him tonight. He's averaged uh, 30 points or more in his last five games. Uh, he's He's been more than that in his last five games. So I took him on prize picks for more than 32 and a half uh, points and rebounds. So Download the prize picks app. Uh, use the promo code Monty. You make a deposit. Up to a hundred dollars, they're going to give you that exact deposit in matching funds. So you deposit ten, you get twenty. Deposit fifty, you get a hundred. Did a hundred bucks on Prize Picks will take you months. Yes, it is so easy. I love it. You can play five dollars. You can play. It's so much fun. And if you're somebody that enjoys playing daily fantasy, do you know what daily fantasy is? You you're taking players, not teams. So you can, like, one of the things I've done really well on, first inning runs in spring training.
because they're telling you one run between these two teams in the first inning. Will Dodgers and Mets score one run in the first inning combined? Less or more? Dude, I'm killing that in spring training. The NCAA tournament, it, I don't know that there's anything more enjoyable than daily fantasy in the NCAA tournament. Because it the hard part about the tournament, when you br- bet a bracket, your bracket goes to hell in the first round, right? Yes. Then you're done, you lose interest. Not in daily fantasy, you're playing different players every single day. And I love it. I am a huge fan of Daily Fantasy. The best is prize picks. Download the app. Use a promo code Monty, M-O-N-T-Y, Monty, to get 100% deposit. Matching Dak of tubs. Oh, man, I can't wait to hear March Madness theme music. Only better theme music was SEC on CBS. Yes. I'm going to miss the SEC, SEC football on CBS. Yeah. It's not the same, dude. It is Vern Lundquist and I... I I understand. I get it. He's old. He, I totally understand it. I'm. I miss that. Yeah. Big Daddy Magic. Here we go. Hey, yo, player Zion has been inspired by Victor. That must be it. Must be it, dude. Victor's the that way. must be it. Eric and Raleigh and I Zion and Williamson nil deal with Ozempic. Damn. Exactly. You'd up fan Jim. I know it's sacrilege, but the Bears need a dome. Williams is such a playmaker, but can he do it at zero degrees in the wind? Uh, Sean Mirzinski, you guys are a hoot this morning. We probably did get a little excited. Rick Forrester, uh, they did carry Rudy off the field. The problem with Rudy at Notre Dame, and we're talking about Notre Dame because, well, you know. You know. Um, the Rudy story is largely true. But everybody believes that the movie Rudy is a biopic, and it is a it is fiction. You guys understand that, right? It's fiction. Well, money. It seemed real. Nine out of the ten storylines in the movie Rudy are not true. I don't know how many people know that, but it's not. It's it's just not true. OG Gary, Rudy Gay. He's not that I know of. I, now I might have missed that part of the the movie. But I I you could know. be wrong. I, yeah. And hey, you know, yeah, uh, I could be wrong. Rudy, uh, I read that one. Rudy from the Cosby Show. Uh, Stepanek, I'm watching Iowa and Kansas State in the NIT tournament. You know, that is one one positive part of March Madness is that you basically have games on constantly. There's always, especially early in the tournament. There's this always is the on. best college basketball week year of the year. Yeah. Right now. Yeah. This is the best college basketball week of the year. It's it's almost inarguable at this point. I don't know how you I don't even know how you you go against that. No. I, I in my opinion, I think it is I think it is one of the best. So again, you're on the record saying who's gonna win the tournament. Uh I think you have to go UConn. You do. I, I, I know it, that's everyone's pick, but I just don't know how you look around and think that, you know, again, teams like you know, again, like UNC or Duke or, you know, Purdue, Houston, like Purdue's probably going to be in that game. You know, they're probably going to be in the, in the, in the championship game. I would guess. How far but... does, how far does BYU come out of the East? Do they beat, do they wind up? I, they beat Duquesne. Yeah. I, I <clears> think <throat> that you're, you're going to lose to Illinois. Yeah. But my suspicion is that's going to be a really tight game. That's going to be one of those games where BYU is going to be like, yeah, you know what? We gave it all we had, and we just lost in the end. It's a three-pointer going in because if, if BYU is making three-pointers, I think you're awfully they're dangerous. You're awfully – they're awfully dangerous. When BYU makes the three ball, they're awfully dangerous. But, again, I think they beat Duquesne, but I'm telling you, Illinois is that team that nobody wants to talk about. Illinois is that team that nobody's seen play. And my my feeling is – my feeling is – Again, I just say this is the best week of college basketball of the year. And, and I think the hard part for BYU is let's say that they were to beat Illinois. Just, you know, I don't know. Illinois. Illinois in those orange uniforms. Um, then you're probably running into Iowa State at that point. Another tough matchup. So that's why I think, you know, BYU definitely is not one of those teams that just has an easy path. So do you want to go to the NCAA tournament and get hosed by Illinois or Iowa State? Or would you rather... And there, this is a legitimate question. Would you rather go to the NIT and have a chance to win the NIT? I say you want to go to the NCAA. Yeah, you want to go to the tournament. I, because yeah. anything can happen. But I, I'm warning you now, BYU fan. And I know that BYU basketball fan is a rabid 
breed of basketball fan. Yeah. We who were born and bred on the on the the naturally sourced rug basketball courts of church ball. Right. But I'm telling you now, it the, the BYU's road to any kind of run in the tournament is it's tough, bro. It's going to be difficult. Pop, yeah. It is almost impossible in that bracket. Um, hey, there he is. Look at that. Ryan from Big O Tires. Good morning. Rabid BYU basketball fan. How are you feeling? If I was any better, I'd be Monty. That, well, <laughs> and this is true. Although as a Bears fan and a Notre Dame fan. But I, I, I did grow up rooting for Illinois. Illinois is a very good team this year. I am concerned about I am concerned about your BYU Cougars. I'm concerned about your Bears, dude. What are they doing? Well, I I'm happy that we traded just we because I'm on the team. Yeah, you're I don't know team. if you, yeah, I don't yeah, Ryan, I don't know if I ever told you that. I'm yeah, the yeah. 79th guy on the depth chart. Yeah. Hey, the Steelers got a steal with him, though. Let's I mean, depending on how it works out, at least as a backup for what they got for him, I think. And I think the Bears did the right thing. The Bears had an opportunity to send him to, and a lot of people think it was Arizona. The Bears had a chance to get like a third round pick and they sent him to Pittsburgh to put him in a better situation. Mm -hmm. I'm worried about Caleb Williams because I don't, I am not a, USC quarterbacks are historically not good in the NFL. And I'm not a buyer on Caleb Williams, but I think the last one was Carson Palmer, right? He was the last one that actually made something of it. Yeah, there's Mark Sanchez in the butt fumble. Um, <laughs> you know, I don't know. <laughs> I don't even know what I, like USC. Matt Leinart was a complete bust. Yeah, and you're taking mm -hmm. Matt Leinart, Sanchez, and put him in the cold. Yeah, but what about Barkley? What about like? Yeah. I mean, Slovis. we saw Keaton Slovis here in in Utah last year, right? Had a great combine, though. I mean, that I mean, I think he surprised a lot of people, including yeah. myself. He can run. He he's he yeah. I'm happy for Keaton because he's in, one of the nicest guys in the world. If I mean, he is. You want Keaton Slovis to marry your daughter? Like he is that he is that level, dude. Right? Like <laughs> he is just the nicest. He's salt to the earth, the nicest guy. So we'll see. But here nor there. Uh, I am super stoked for the NC. It, are you an NCAA tournament? Do you want the tournament expanded? What do you think about 80 teams in an NCAA? No, I don't tournament? think it needs to be in bracket. I don't think it needs to be expanded. I love it. I've already got two brackets filled out. Um, yeah, I'm excited. I think, I think it's going to be a rough path for BYU, um, but it's going to be fun either way. I mean, it's always exciting when your team does better in the bracket, but it's just an exciting time for basketball and for college basketball, especially, obviously. How different are your brackets? Did you go, did you choose violence in one and then common sense in the other? Or <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. So one, one, one definitely I got BYU in the uh, Sweet 16. Um, and the other one, I have them losing to Iowa State. Or Illinois, sorry, Illinois. So you did go, yeah, see, that's what yeah. you should do. You need to have like the unhinged bracket BYU all the way. And then you're like, oh yeah, we're going to lose to Duquesne. That's be, okay. Let's just mark that. <laughs> like no, 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 no. Uh, who do yeah. you have winning at all? Uh, Purdue. You do have Purdue. Win you God, People love Purdue. Yeah. Well, when you got that kind of size, man. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Right. I he think is a big dude. Yeah. He is a big dude. I, I think I'm probably leaning. I think Iowa State's the, the sleeper team. I think – I do believe Colorado can win some games in this tournament, and I know that's crazy, but I think if I was going to pick – I think you have to go UConn. UConn or Purdue seem like the two best fits to – I just don't want UConn or North Carolina to win, bro. It's real talk. I'm a North Carolina basketball fan. We're not winning anything because yeah. I'm on that team as well. Multi-sport <laughs> guy. Um, I, they're, I, I'm telling you right now, North Carolina is not, not winning. Armando Baycott's not a championship player. Yeah. And I love my guy. I love that team. Grew up as a Jordan fan, obviously, but they're not. I mean, I think the the only program that is far superior uh, to to Purdue is the program you get when you show up at uh, Big O Tires and you get your window tinted. Now, I'm not. I don't mean to slander anybody. I got my window tinted on the new BMW, and you didn't do the job for me. And I am not so thrilled at the at the end product and i think that's one of the things you guys do well is that your end product is superior ryan 
I think you know you what we're doing. That. Yeah, I went to I went to a dealer to get my window tinted, and I'm a little. They're telling me that the the sun will bake out the bubbles, and that there's a big bubble in my tent. Mm. I mean, give it a day or two, it could get better, but I would take it back. And that's the thing, we do offer a great product, but in the very rare chance that we do make a mistake and fumble, we pick it back up and we make it right. Like we will make sure that when we do make mistakes. We're going to correct them and prove you like, hey, this isn't our normal work. We're going to make it yeah. right to you guys. But it's a lesson learned because the tent you get. So for the you, you most people on this show know this because I tell the story all the time. Ryan and his guys at Big O Tires tinted my Jeep Grand Cherokee. And it's perfect. Like it is, it is dark in the back. It is nice and light in the front. Like it's perfect. Um, I just, that's the thing that I've come to know you for is the superior end product. Whether you you guys did an alignment on my Jeep, you guys did an oil change on my, like everything you guys have done has been perfect. How much pride do you take in that end product? Uh, a lot. I mean, how many times do you, you go out to eat somewhere and you don't like what you had and you never go back there? So we really take a lot of pride to make sure the customers are happy the first time and the second time and the third time. And we have procedures in place to allow us to have a minimal amount of mistakes or opportunity for even mistakes so that the customer is happy and they leave here and they do come back. Well, and I think that part of that is that who are they dealing with? The first time I ever walked in your store, who did I deal with? You. I dealt with the owner of the store. Like, and I think, Ryan, I think that's a big deal because you are, and not only have I dealt with you from customer to owner, but I've watched you work with so many of the customers in your store. And one of the things that you do exceptionally well, and not even because you're sitting here on the show, your level of communication I knew when my car was going to be done. You said, hey, it'll be done at, let's say, 11 o'clock. Hey, it'll be done at 11 o'clock. You called me before 11 and said, hey, you're, re you're ready to go. Stop by, pick it up anytime you want. Like your level of communication, Ryan, is so much better than your competitor. 100% agreed. And, and whether it's through text or phone or email, we're able to communicate with the customers to make sure that they're happy and understanding the process of the vehicle being ready as well. Yeah, I think it's I think it's absolutely phenomenal. I appreciate you. Uh Big O Tires in American Fork. Well, like what is the what is the what job are you guys doing the most of right now? Because we're in this weird period where we're going to be in the 60s all week and then this weekend we're going to rain and snow. Like are you what are you guys doing the most of right now? What are people asking you for? I think right now everyone's bringing their car in and getting their cars ready for for spring and summer traveling. We've got a spring healthy car special right now where it's $59.99. We change your oil, rotate your tires, check all your fluids and brakes and your alignment, battery, alternator. And so a lot of people bringing that in to make sure their cars are ready for those spring break trips so that when they um, go on those trips, there's no issues or breakdowns. Yeah. Um, so we're doing that a lot right now. Um, a lot of accessories right now. I think we've done 10 lift or leveling kits in the last two weeks uh um, do you have a picture on your instagram and i want to i can't remember man forgive me i think it's a white pickup that you put a leveling kit on that thing was unbelievable yes. dude the what the f-150 or the gmc the f-150 okay you put yeah. you guys and, and i i should look before i speak but you guys do really i don't think people understand this your lift kit leveling kit work is Money. Unbelievable. Yeah. You do a great job. And you really look, do. I mean, it looks so much better when you level a truck, too. And everyone thinks it's so expensive. Oh, I don't want to spend six, seven, eight thousand dollars $8,000. Like, we could put a leveling kit on an F-150 or GMC for three to 500 bucks. Yeah. And you also did a, um, you had like a Nissan, like one of those Nissan vans. The Storm and Mormon Battalion vans? Yeah. Yes! <laughs> That one, <laughs> we were all that thinking, turned out pretty good. We were all thinking it. Yeah, we put a lift on that. We've done quite a few of those. Put a lift, some wheels, tires, um, and uh, they actually took it to another shop after us and put four wheel drive on it. So now it's a four wheel drive, literally a battalion rig. That's crazy. Wild. Crazy. Yeah. Hey, run that. What did you say? Fifty nine ninety nine on that that car care special. Yeah, fifty nine ninety nine. Uh, our healthy car spring special. We'll do an oil change, rotate your tires, check your alignment, top off your fluids, check all your fluids, your filters, your brakes, your alternator, your battery, 
I also do a complimentary alignment check um, to make sure your car's all ready. And there's no, we'll give you a list of everything it needs. And you can let us know what you want to get done now or later, and we'll we'll take care of it. Hook it up. Go see Ryan at Big O Tires and American Fork. Make sure you tell him you heard about him on the Monty Show. Also, find him on Instagram because that that van, what did you call that van? Uh, it's what did I say? The bat- Mormon Battalion van. That's it. The, yes. and- <laughs> the battalion. The Stormin Mormon Battalion van. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> you it rolled so easily the first time. <laughs> uh, go check it out. Big O Tires uh, AF on Instagram. Ryan, always good to see you, man. Appreciate you. You too, guys. Have a good one. There you go. Ryan from Big O Tires, my guy, I'm telling you. Dude, he's the best if, in the business. And bro. if you don't follow him, uh, if you don't follow him on Instagram, the work that you see his guys do, that Nissan, if you didn't see it, look at that thing. The Nissan van that yeah, they dude. put out. Yeah. I don't know if you guys can see that. That Nissan van that they put out, that thing's unbelievable, you guys. It is so good. It is so, so good. Yes. That $59 spring car care special. I cannot tell you the peace of mind that you get if you're going on a road trip and things like battery, you guys forget that your battery takes a beating in all this cold weather that you're coming out of the winter in, and then it warms up in spring. And then you get those cold spring weekends like we're going to have here in Utah. I think we have a high of 70 degrees this week, yeah, 69. Let's, let's, let's check real quick because that's we're, we're in what, what Utahns call fake fake spring. Where yes. it warms up and then it just takes a dump right on you. Whoa. Okay. Guy, this is a family show. What, what is wrong with you? What? What is wrong with you? Um, yeah. So I would tell you that uh we are in fake spring. What are you looking at? Uh, like it's an, an ad? ad. Yes. It's uh, a freaking we are ad. going to be this week here in the great state of Utah, 67 today, 69 Wednesday, 63, 64, 48 and snow on the weekend brutal 48 and snow so you get temperatures that go up your batteries take a beating go see ryan and big o tires and american fork for brakes alignments tires there are certain people in this world who use Dude. winter tires and spring tires yes go and hook he it offers up. financing so he does if you have yes if you need solutions need certain financing he will help you and again can't say it enough no shade on the bmw dealer because they've done a great job Ryan gives you a superior experience. I'm a little nervous about this real quick before we get to the bears, because I do want to talk Caleb Williams. $60,000 BMW, the brand new 2024 X2 M. The first one ever sold. Your boy got it. I did paint protection and tint. And I got, so in Utah, again, we have a real rock chip windshield issue. I got a coating on my windshield and I got paint protection, pretty much all the entire front end in the mirror caps. And I'm a little concerned. There's a lot of haze and bubbling on like the driver's side mirror cap. I'm not happy about it. I am not happy about it. And the funny thing is, and I think we talked about this on the show, we joked with the people at BMW that. Ryan at Big O Tires is going to be upset because he was going to do my tint. He was going to do my paint protection, all of that. And they're like, oh, no, they gave me like a crazy deal on it. Yeah. And this is what you get. Ryan is, I saved, I might have saved $100 and it was really dumb. I made a bad, bad decision. I should have just gone, if I'd have taken the Beamer down to American Fork, dropped it off, I could have left it there for two days. I'd have had perfect tint and perfect pain protection yeah done and now it's like oh well leave it like the guy says to me leave it in the sun the sun will bake it it'll be fine dude i've never seen i i've had pain protection on just about every car i've driven i don't have high hopes yeah and the pain in the ass that it is to take it back to your dealership I'm not looking forward to that. Yeah. I uh, had to step away for a minute. Did Monty talk about Caitlin Clark's thought on Anthony Edwards dunk last night? And look, what is on TV right now? <laughs> Dude, he jumps from just inside the free throw line. Bro. It's the NBA. Your mom dunks in the NBA. Yeah, Everybody but it's can not dunk. Like he just was under the basket. One and to ten up, rate dude. the dunk. It's an eight and a half at least. Oh, it's at least. In eight and a half. At least. He ended him. He left the game after that dunk, dude. 
John what? Collins is done. So it's over. Okay. It's a good dunk. I just don't understand the criteria for a great dunk. I, I don't understand it. I think like the alley oop last night. What was that alley oop we were watching? In the Hawks game, I think it was. I can't remember who it was, but those are great dunks. Anthony Edwards jumping over a guy like John Collins who was turned the wrong way and tried to jump with Ant. Like, okay, it's a great dunk, even. It's not, it's like a seven out of 10. Like, I if, if we're talking about 10 out of 10, I need chest to chest, jump with me and I'm dunking on that ass. Okay. Like, that's what I need. Yeah. It's fine. Big Daddy Magic. Monty. Monty cry about North Dame. Been punch loser and bears as being a walking embarrassment. Bro, what are you talking about? It's You're not wrong. Uh, Mike Smith, we went from 71 day to 35 two days later. Me no likey, right? Seriously, Mike. Like, what are we doing? Seriously. Uh, I give it a nine. John Collins got murdered. That's what I'm saying, dude. A murked. nine? But he got murked. A nine. Wow. Not one or two or three, but nine. Force goes Fabio. Monty doesn't appreciate a good dunk. Ant's one of my favorite players. It's a, it's a good dunk. It's not a great dunk. Monty being a hater. Stepanic. Jordan did that dunk in his sleep. Thank you. <laughs> Jordan went down and he threw a vicious hammer down on Patrick Ewing. <clears throat> Probably over the top. <clears throat> Probably uh, over you, the top. Us? What? Probably over the top. But it is what it is. All right. Hour number two of the Monty Show is always presented by our good friends at Big O Tire and American Fork. You just heard from Ryan. Go tell him uh, you heard about it on the Monty Show. That fifty nine ninety nine spring car care checkup is unbeatable. Yeah, you can go in there and completely refresh your car. Like, do the $59 special. Get yourself a set of, of, of tires. You're in a great place. You don't have to worry about your car anymore. Totally That's agree. That's the beautiful thing about it. Totally agree. Totally agree. Um, now, what you got going on? People email. Are people emailing you now? Yes. Don't email me. Don't e I, I, don't, it, don't don't. I got people emailing me about what I said about the NCAA tournament in the Big Twelve, and it's like, just oh, Monty, Monty, down. come on, Monty. All right, let's let me ask you this. Have the Chicago Bears won NBA NFL free agency, rather, excuse me. I think there's no doubt they've had the best offseason so far. And the coup de gras was trading Justin Fields. Now, there's a couple other things I'd point out. Everybody that's upset that the Bears, you know, got like a 47th round pick from the Steelers. What did you want them to get? You have to have a market to trade somebody. I knew today would be shitty. There were multiple teams supposedly interested. I've heard a lot about Arizona. I've heard a lot about a lot of other teams that were offering fourth round picks. Okay, great. Ryan Poles did, I think, Justin Fields a huge favor sending him to Pittsburgh. It's an organization that is patient with their quarterbacks and he needs development. Justin Fields needs to go somewhere and sit and understand I am not competing for the starting job. My only de deal here is to make sure that I spend this season and develop my ability to throw the football. End of story. They did that. They sent him to Pittsburgh. He is going to develop. I think it is the best possible situation for Justin Fields. I don't even think that's a doubt. But the Bears, I think, did what they had to do. You needed to move on from Justin Fields. I've talked about this repeatedly on the show. Take my Bears fandom out of it. How many times have you looked at Justin Fields and said to yourself, this is one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL? It's a grand total of never. Have you ever said that? And if you did, you should go back and reevaluate re your sanity. Because Justin <laughs> Fields, in all seriousness, Justin Fields has never been one of the better quarterbacks in the NFL. Justin Fields to date has been nothing more than a running back in this league. And a pretty good one. But you didn't pay him to be a running back. You drafted Justin Fields to be a quarterback. Now let's also be clear that the Chicago Bears have not done anything to build an offense or develop Justin Fields. It's just not who this organization has historically been until right now, it appears.
because the Bears added tight ends. The Bears added a wide receiver in Keenan Allen, who has talked all about the fact he hates playing in cold weather. I think some of that was tongue in cheek. I think this Chicago Bears team has done everything that you could ask them to do to build an offense that works for Caleb Williams. And I think it is a very smart play to trade Justin Fields and draft Caleb Williams. Jake, did the Bears do the right thing here? Absolutely. I I, I think the Bears did the right thing. I, I My only complaint would be that you took too long to do it. And, and I think that's why the market dried up. And I think that's why, you know, you wind up trading him for basically nothing, right? And everyone, the haters are going to say, well, hey, this, this guy – you know, was supposed to be a franchise quarterback. This guy was supposed to be everything to you and was supposed to take, you know, the team to the next level, and it just didn't work out. And I think, you know, the 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 true winner in the offseason to me is the Steelers, not because of Justin Fields, but because of the dynamic that they now have at play. Their biggest struggle last season was the quarterback position. Now you have Russell Wilson, and yeah, sure, did he have a rough go in Denver? Absolutely. Will he continue to have a rough go uh, in Pittsburgh? I don't believe that. I, I think that he understands that now is the time. And so when I think about Justin Fields now going to the Steelers, I look at that and I say, you're right. They did do Justin Fields a favor because let's say Russ gets hurt. Let's say that he's unavailable for a couple of weeks. Now, Justin Fields is stepping into a system that really should cater to his strengths as a player because his strengths are the same as Russell Wilson's strength outside of throwing the football. Russell Wilson, obviously, is a better thrower of the football than Justin Fields. But what are we all going to say when Justin Fields develops into a, a competent and good enough thrower of the football? There's not going to be much to say because at that point, he's still going to have the run game. He's now going to be able to throw the football. And all that's left is can he evaluate a defense in the pre-snap read? That's all that's left as a quarterback at that point. Well, and I'd also remind you, Arthur Smith is now the offensive coordinator of the Pittsburgh Steelers, which was a phenomenal hire. You can say whatever you want about Arthur Smith as the head coach of the Falcons. But Arthur Smith is a very good offensive coordinator. Yeah, he's proven that. Yeah. He's proven that. And I, I think, think that some dudes are, are better as coordinators than head coaches. I think when you look at the style of offense that Pittsburgh wants to play, they want to run the football first. And I think that that whether it's it's Russell Wilson or Justin Fields, this is the offense that both of those guys are strongly suited to contend in. Now, I think the bigger question is Caleb Williams in the NFL draft. Uh -huh. Because I am not I am not at all questioning Justin Fields and why he didn't succeed with the Bears. I know the answer to that. Well, the Chicago Bears are why he didn't succeed with the Chicago Bears. Right. So why should I believe that Caleb Williams is going to succeed with the Chicago Bears? He is by far the most talented arm in this draft. It's not close. And I know that those are grandiose statements and over-the-top statements, but if you go back and you look at the tape on Caleb Williams and the touch throws he makes, the arm strength throws that he makes from one hash to the far boundary. You look at his accuracy throwing the ball down the field. He has all of the tools. He has situational and spatial awareness that most quarterbacks can only dream of. Caleb Williams is prepared to win in the National Football League because he's got the skill set to do that. You want to talk about crying with his family and swaddling against his mother's breasts in the stands in the fetal position? Okay, I'm here for that. That makes me nervous. What makes me more nervous is the fact that it's just the Chicago Bears who have never not one time developed a quarterback from draft pick to all pro. They've Thanks. never done that, not once. And are they in a position to do that now? Yes, they are They are scheme diverse. They can do many things. They can line up in multiple sets. They can disguise. They can all of that stuff. But why until we see it should we believe that the Bears now somehow are going to become a quarterback factory where they build and turn Caleb Williams into a generational performer? Because I don't have any confidence they're going to do that. I think the coaching changes they've made, fantastic. The talent that they brought in, fantastic. But it's still the Chicago Bears. It is still the team that failed Mitch Trubisky horrendously. It is still the same organization who, had they drafted Patty Ice, would have failed Patrick Mahomes, Thanks. who would not be 
look, looking lovingly and longingly into the eyes of Taylor Swift and fantasizing about her era's tour. <laughs> it doesn't matter who the quarterback is. The Bears have failed their quarterbacks, each and every one of them. Whether you want to go back to, oh, Captain America and Jim Harbaugh, Mike Tomzak, Steve Fuller, Jay Cutler. Jay Cutler wasn't their guy. Dude, you're forgetting about Rex Grossman. Come on. Flexi Rexy. Come on. I mean, you pick the guy. Kyle Orton in his porn stash. Nick Foles. Pick the guy. The Bears have failed that quarterback. Yeah. Now, Ryan Poles is doing a very nice job as a general manager of the Bears. But I only give him a 60-40% chance of succeeding in developing Caleb Williams. Uh, that's it. That's it. Well, I don't know why you'd give him any more. Keeping I, Matt know. Eber sucks as your head coach Whoa, was a huge mistake. Dude, have you improved on your relationship? Last week, you wouldn't even say dude's name. I didn't say his name. Eber sucks? Yeah. Okay. Well, he does. I thought, you were, I thought that was his name. Phenomenal defensive coordinator. Mm -hmm. Terrible head coach. Yeah, well, let's make him our head coach. I, 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 and I, listen, I, 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 you, we, I'm saying. Yeah. Why should I have confidence in my Chicago Bears? Uh, I don't think you should have confidence, but I do think that, you know, they're obviously making somewhat logical decisions now. That That's always been the hardest part for me with the Bears. A lot of times they make decisions that just aren't that logical. There's a lot of times you're like, why did we do this? What was the what was the thought? And and, and we were heading down that same path when, you know, they, they decided to retain Eber sucks. And I was like, dude, like, what are we doing? Why are you retaining this guy? And now they've done exactly what we said you can't do, which is trade Justin Fields, draft Caleb Williams, and try to put some pieces around him. Like, I understand that that might be logical, that that might be pragmatic, but the issue starts with your head coach. You can't yeah. have a defensive-minded head coach when you've got a Ferrari at quarterback, and you're going to sit here and you're going to waste him because I got news for you. The thing you shouldn't trust is the offensive line in Chicago. That's what you can't trust. At some point, that offensive line is going to have to prove it can actually stand up against somebody. And listen, they've gotten better. Uh, uh, there's there's no doubt that the Chicago Bears, talent-wise, uh, are in a position now to compete game in and game out. They were never in that position last year. Uh -huh. Tyson Badgen and Brett Rippon, those, those should be training camp arms. Right. Right? You're going to draft Caleb Williams. And my guess is you're going to sign a veteran quarterback to be his backup. That'd be my guess. But you look at Khalil Herbert and DeAndre Swift. Those are two very capable running backs. Um, you look at DJ Moore. DJ Moore is everybody's number one wide receiver. It doesn't matter what team he's on. Right. He is a very, very good wide receiver. Keenan Allen is a, is a good addition. Cole Komet is an elite tight end in this league. Gerald Everett is a really nice pickup. I look at guys like Nate Davis. Nate Davis needs to develop and perform. There's there's just no doubt about that. Tevin Jenkins, this offensive line is going to be better. And the, the other thing that I think a lot of people don't understand is Eric Washington was a very nice pickup as defensive coordinator. Mm -hmm. He is an elite inside defensive line coach, and I, he is elite. Assistant head coach, D-line coach in Buffalo. Uh, Eber Sucks knows him well from their, their experience together. And this defensive line is going to be better. They were rumored to be in on Chase Young, who got a one-year $13 million deal from the Saints, fully guaranteed. No, I'm good. I'm Go good. Pass on that. You look at this, this Bears defense, and remember that they schematically are 4-3. And you look at, they paid Jalen Johnson, like they're making pragmatic decisions now. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like the the logic outside of Eber sucks is there, right? You you made a decision and you've put your foot in the ground and said, "Hey, we're going to trade Justin Fields, then we're going to draft Caleb Williams, and in addition to that, we're going to add pieces around him." Okay, that's fine. That makes sense to me. All right, cool. But what's the excuse going to be when you wind up firing Matt Eber sucks and, you know, you're bringing in a new guy? into a second year of Caleb Williams. What's that? What's the excuse going to be? Because you know that's going to happen. I don't know what your excuse would be. I think it is, it is one of these things where Caleb Williams, he has solid playmakers around him. 
Um, I think Keenan Allen, that trade was really well done. Yeah. I can't rave about that deal enough. I think DeAndre Swift um, gives you a, a, an outlet, a, a, a panic button, if you will. Mm -hmm. I think Keenan Allen and DJ Moore are a dynamic one, too. This feels like, in my opinion, this feels like the right direction. He's it, it, Caleb Williams is a superior NFL prospect to Drake May, Jaden Daniels, who's probably going to now go number two, right, to Washington. Right. Um, I think there is a lot of question about who Arizona takes at four. I think they're going to take Malik Neighbors. I think Marvin Harrison is going to be that cat that's going to fall. And I think you look at the the LA Chargers. The LA Chargers are going to take their highest rated wide receiver at number five. Yes. And I think that is exactly what they should be doing. Um, my biggest fear is that what the Bears do with that ninth pick. And I understand that people want them to take end. But I don't know how you look past Dallas Turner if he is still there at nine. I am not. And Jared versus Mel Kuyper put out his new mock draft. Jared versus the guy he has the Bears taken at nine. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants them to take an edge. You've got to get back to great linebacker play yes. in this defense. Yeah, I mean, look, you, you look at the elite defenses in the league, and that's why they're able to disguise so well. I mean, think about it, right? Like, if your defensive end mm. can, can, can float back a little bit and can drop pre-snap, that's going to allow you so much flexibility because – you know, again, just in, in basic terms, if your defensive end is, is just simply standing on the end of the line of scrimmage, you have no idea what that's going to be. You don't know if that's pressure or if that's him dropping into coverage or if they're going to bring the guy from the slot or if it's going to come from the A-gap. Like, you have no idea. That's the beauty of it. So when guys like Chase Young get away from you and you allow them to leave, because obviously you don't want to pay him $13 million fully guaranteed for one season. You have to go out and replace that talent with somebody. And again, I, I think we all agree on this. Defensive scheming pre-snap is why the Chiefs are so damn tough to beat. Yes. And their ability to trick you is why they're so tough to beat. But why are they able to do that? Because A, mm. they've got an elite defensive coordinator in yep. Spags. But, yes. but B... They've got the talent to run the kind of system he wants to run. So for the Bears, it's like, yeah, cool. Go out and get Caleb Williams as an example, or go out and get a fresh defensive end. But if you if you can't execute the system at a high level, then the names can can be whatever you want them to be. And that's my concern: is that this is cool. You're making moves. You you've clearly taken a direction here. But which is nice execute. It is. It's improvement. There's no question about it. It's absolutely improvement by the front office. No doubt about it. But but my question is, when like, look at the division. The Packers are probably winning this division. It, you know, obviously the Lions have something to say, but the Packers looked really, really, really good. Like that ass kicking on the to the Cowboys. That was impressive stuff. Well, and look at the quarterback position there. Love has had how many years to just sit and grind away? Yeah. Right. And I think what you're seeing is I think there's no doubt the top three teams in this draft are taking quarterback. I, I think yeah. I think Washington and New England for certain. But you start to look at like look at look at number 10 with the Jets. Look at I mean, are you not taking the best offensive weapon available to you there? Mel Kuyper has him taking Brock Bowers out of Georgia. Yeah. But then look at eleven. And this is where I start to wonder about teams and their talent evaluation. Dude. <laughs> you have the Minnesota Vikings who just lost Kirk Cousins mm -hmm. and have failed miserably at the quarterback position. Sorry, BYU. You're really going to take free Harbaugh? It's a risk. There's no other way to look at it, dude. You're drafting a quarterback at 11. He's a franchise quarterback. And free Harbaugh is the guy you're going with? It's a risk. That's a team that should trade up. And by the way, 
you know, let's not let's not forget the Justin Jefferson sweepstakes that are at play in Minnesota. I don't think there's a Justin Jefferson sweepstakes. Oh, I think there is. I don't. I don't. He, well, how do you how was how is there not? He's not going to re-sign there. I think that you can try and trade him. I don't think there's any question about that. I don't. I don't think that it is even. I I think this year will determine if he resigns there. Mm. I think it would be. You're not going to trade him. You're not. You you don't trade Justin Jefferson. And I just don't think he's going to stay if you draft JJ. You you just like, don't. I, I I think. But you look at the Broncos. Another very interesting situation. You're really taking Bo Nix at twelve. Yeah, I don't know either. Like, what what do you? If I if I look at if I look at the quarterbacks in this draft. If if you're the Denver Broncos or the Minnesota Vikings, are you not trying to trade up? Are are you are you out of your mind to be you, yeah. Bo Nix? Like it is is Michael? Like where is Michael Penix? This this is a thing that's wild to me. If you're the Minnesota Vikings, you're going to take Free Harbaugh over Michael Penix. Apparently, if you're the Denver Broncos, you're going to take Free Harbaugh over. Michael Penix? That's what I'm saying. For the it's so Bo Nix over Michael Penix? That's wild. How? But How? That, I don't know. Especially again, you know, for a team like the Vikings, who you're you play inside at home. Like it's a passer's paradise. Like you need to have that's why. Why do you think her cousins did so well in Minnesota? Yeah, because it's ideal playing conditions every time you're playing at home. So that's why I say. Okay, cool. You 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 want to go out and you want to take a, a a a risk on 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 dudes like Bo Nix or JJ McCarthy or Free Harbaugh. For, you know, like good lord, man. Like, why not get a more reliable option? Like, yeah. Like, why not say, okay, we know that the Justin Jefferson situation is a little bit volatile right now. We know he wants to get paid. We also know that he doesn't want to be on a bad team. So you went Free Harbaugh. That's what I'm talking about. Like, I'm not saying Free Harbaugh sucks, but he's not a franchise caliber quarterback. No, I would agree. He he is that guy that's like, I hesitate to say career backup because he's more talented than that. But I'm not confident that he can make all the NFL throws. He's gonna have to show me that. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't know what you do with it because I think you you really are. And this is just my opinion again. I I think you're really asking for trouble if you draft Jaden Daniels. Number two, I, I think you have nothing to hang on to with Jaden Daniel. Like he's a developmental project. He's not ready to start in the NFL. I I, I mean, I, I just don't know how, and especially with the issues in Washington. Yeah. I don't know how you believe he's ready to start in the NFL. I don't know how you believe Free Harbaugh is ready to start in the NFL. Are you telling me that Big Penix Energy hasn't done enough? What it was completely healthy at Washington, and you're taking Bo Nix over Michael Penix Jr. I, I it's just crazy. crazy to me, absolutely insane. I, I, you look at the teams that win in this league, they all have a league quarterback play, every single one of them, and it's it's without exception. Like, you look at you look at the worst, the Chicago Bears, no quarterback play. The Kansas City Chiefs, the best quarterback play, right? I, I mean, you you look at the 49ers, really good quarterback play in Brock Purdy. I, I just can't imagine that you're the Minnesota Vikings and you've let Kirk Cousins go. And you're going to draft free Harbaugh? Wild. I, I just, I, I don't know how they got there. That's what I'm saying. It, it clearly, Wild. dude, clearly it is a... They believe Free Harbaugh is their best option, and and I get it. I'm a well documented, you know, not fan of Michigan and that whole situation. He's not why they won a national championship. The offensive line and Blake Horm are why they won a national championship. But even looking at, you know, like I I I think the best draft expert in the world is a guy named Daniel Jeremiah. You probably don't know who that is. He's got Caleb May, uh, Caleb Williams, number one. He's got Washington taking Drake May, number two. 
He's got New England taking Jaden Daniels number three. He's got Minnesota uh, moving up to take free Harbaugh number four. You moved up to take free Harbaugh. He's got the Jets on Marvin Harrison Jr., the Giants on Malik Neighbors, the Titans on Joe Alt, the Falcons on Dallas Turner, and the Chicago Bears on Rome Adunze at number nine. Fuck me. If they take Rome Adunze number nine, I quit. I will do nothing. I will not burn my jerseys. I will continue to fly my flag and wear my hat. That's hats, right, T. But I am not going to be happy. If, if they draft Roma Dunze, will you grow a stash and put the glasses on? No, but I'll shave my pubes. I mean, <laughs> I'm telling you right now, <laughs> things are going to get crazy if they draft Roma Dunze. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I I want nothing to do with that. Why would okay? Why would you draft Rome? When you should be drafting offensive line. You should be drafting offensive line or best available defensive player. Yeah. And when I look at Dallas Turner, if Dallas Turner is there and you take Roma Dune, say I am punching you in the face. I am gonna I am gonna remove some teeth. Like you cannot take Roma Dunze over Dallas Turner. Please God. Classic mistake. Please God. You cannot do that. You you just cannot. And I understand it. And listen, he's got big Penix energy going to the Vegas Raiders at, at 13. Right. You're telling me you're we're looking at five quarterbacks in the top 13, right? All if you of which are selected before Buddy. If you take the top three, Williams, May, and Daniels there. Yeah. Four is free Harbaugh at number four, right? Then we go down. And well, Jake goes down anyways, but then we go down the CAC and you've got five quarterbacks in the top 13 yeah, with big Penix energy. Right. And then you, you've got to go all the, in, in Daniel Jeremiah's draft, right. You've got to go all the way through the end of the first round and you don't find another quarterback. Right. I, I yeah. Bo Nix is not a first round pick, man. Uh, I, I'm, yeah, he's he that guy. Be. Yet he he's that be. guy. And we you say know. it every year, right? I mean, every single year, there's a guy who we're like, yeah, dude, this guy should be like a second rounder, you know, the, like mid second rounder, you know, is going to be a little bit of a project, but has potential. And yet you draft him in the first round, give him five years of or four years guaranteed in an option. You know, money's a little less because it's a lower first round, but it just is. Again, I, I don't know why it's so hard to say, hey, dude, this guy played in this situation in college. That situation is like ours or not like ours. But I like, look at Marvin Harrison Jr. I want him because he played at Ohio State. Yeah. And he played in big games and he played well. I'm a little concerned he's injury prone. But Ohio but, State guys, generally speaking, have been very productive in the league. Yeah, and I think if you're if you're choosing between Malik Neighbors and Marvin Harrison Jr., you're in a pretty good spot. Yes, yes, right. Because I yes. think Malik, I think they're very close. I think Malik's a better wide receiver. That's just my opinion. Um, but what what do I know? But I think you're in a great spot there. If you're the Chicago Bears, please don't pick between wide receiver and running or uh, linebacker. Don't do it. There's if Dallas Turner is there, t make the pick. Make the pick, yeah. and I understand Atlanta's going to probably go best defensive player right in front of you at eight, but there are multiple best defensive players. You can't go wide receiver there. You just traded for Keenan Allen. And I I am telling you, Roma Dunze is not generational. I think Malik Neighbors and Marvin Harrison Jr., talent-wise, I think they're generational. I think Roma Dunze becomes that third, four wide receiver guy. Yes. If you're drafting wide receiver at nine, he better be generational. Yep. And neighbors and Harrison are not going to be there because those guys are not, those guys are not hanging around. No. Right. I They're think way too good. I think, I think Daniel Jeremiah is pretty close. I think bears on Caleb Washington commanders on Drake may. I think Jaden Daniels is in fact the third quarterback off the board. I Minnesota, just chop your, don't even shoot your feet off. Just chop your legs off at the knees. Well, you should be happy as a Bears fan, right? Yeah. I would love them in the division. Makes makes the Bears better, right? Now, if you get, if you're the Jets and you get Marvin Harrison Jr., look out. Yeah. Because that offense now is going to become very difficult to Loaded. deal with. Loaded. 
very difficult to deal with. I would love the Bears to get Joe Alt. Yeah. If you wound up with him, I'd be fine. I think mm. the hard part is Fulaga from Oregon State and Joe Walt are probably going to be taken right around you. And you're you're the guy you take, Dallas Turner, Roma Dunze, they're always going to be compared. 100%. They're always going to be compared. And I think that if if you can get like the Chargers, my guess is the Chargers are going to move up and they're going to take something of the best offensive player. And if one of those wide receivers is still available, or if a guy like Joe Alt is still available, you know that 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 Jim Harbaugh is going to do that. 100%. That's his philosophy. That's his blueprint. Yes. It always has been. Always has been. Always will be. And by the way, it works. It, it works. does work. It, it does works. work. All right. Let's see. Uh, Stepanek, how are you, my friend? If Chicago wins their division, will you wear a Mohawk, Monty? No. <laughs> no. No. Hey, by the way, uh, real cool, while we're reading the comment section, you got any Girl Scout cookies for me? You want to shut up? I don't have did, any did Girl your, Scout Did your cookies. shipment come in yet? No. I don't have Girl Scout cookies. Uh-huh. I don't. Okay. I don't. Okay. Not for you, anyway. Uh, the iPad says, good morning, go Utes. Big Blue Horses, only eight number one QBs have won the Super Bowl. Two of those were backups. The hit rate on the number one QB is horrendous. Not good at all. Delaric, uh, Penix falls to 14, I think, to New Orleans. Eh? That'd be a steal. They need a gunslinger. That'd be a steal, uh, I think. It, it just, yeah. I don't know. Stepanek, uh, that's crazy. They should hire a professional draft team, dude. Dude. Yeah. Uh, Delaric, I'm happy with that, too. If my Saints can get Penix, Jaden, or Rattler, Spencer Rattler. Or, ooh. Spencer Rattler. His upside is so big. He was not a good college quarterback, but, boy, he looks like he's got NFL talent. Yes. Uh, Tanner Plumare, uh, the Vikings might see something in free Harbaugh that no one else sees. Apparently. Like losses. Uh, the eye patch, the reason Michigan won the national championship is because they didn't play Georgia, and they had dominant trench play. Yes. Both their lines were amazing. It was not free Harbaugh. Uh, Kim Coulter says shaving pubes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Mike Smith, he will be a hell of a wide receiver. They need an O-lineman, and they can get another later. Some good wide receivers in this draft. There are. Yeah. But this Bears team, you have two really good wide receivers under contract right now. Go get me the best defensive player available. Go get me the best defensive player available at nine, please. Uh, OG Gary, I just find it hard that the Bears pass up Rome or Neighbors. Neighbors won't be there. Yeah, he won't be there. I mean, how on, and maybe I just am stupid, which many of you say. How does he get past, how does he get past the Jets at five? Okay, well, if Minnesota trades up, right, and in Jeremiah's draft, he has them trading up, right? But if you have, like, I look at, at um, I look at Kuiper's draft. Uh, Kuiper's got May going three and Marvin Harrison four to the Cardinals. Malik neighbors five to the Chargers if there are no trades. The Giants six, Roma Dunze. Yeah. Seven, Joe Alt to the Titans. Eight, Dallas Turner to the to the Falcons. And the Bears take uh Jared Verse from Florida State. Which would be great. It'd be great. I mean, it is it is just gonna be hmm. There's going to be some surprises in that first five picks. But you just traded for Keenan Allen. Yeah. Why would you be drafting a wide receiver? You yeah, have. shouldn't be. You should be drafting offensive line. Yeah. Uh, Eric says Marvin Harrison falls to the lower 20s. There you go. Uh, that's awkward guy. JJ is not a first-round pick. I agree. He's not. Yet somehow he'll land in the first round, and it's incredible to me. If Chicago wins their division, no, I will not. I already read that one. Uh, Dak and Brady were both projects. They were. They were, absolutely. Dakota would love for the Chiefs to pick up uh, a Donnie Mitchell. Oh, man, dude. Yeah. The Texas wide receiver class could be prolific. Yes. How how long before Xavier Worthy's off the board? He's first-round pick. You think he's a first-round pick? I think he's a first-round pick. You don't do what he did at the Combine and go to the second round. No, you don't run that fast generally. And by the uh, way, they there have are teams that need him. Well, there's a there's a lot of wide receivers, and I think a lot of guys that, that are in need, certainly. Um, who else needs wide receiver? Arizona at 23. 
Yeah, Brian Thomas is that wide receiver that nobody's talking about. Uh-huh. I would agree with that. Um, boy, man, Byron Murphy is going to be, I think he's going to be unbelievable. Kool-Aid McKintree is another one. I would love the Bears to end up with Kool-Aid. Yeah. Can you imagine him and Johnson? Gangster and, oh name, dude. God. Can you imagine? Um, and Daniel Jeremiah's got uh, Adani Mitchell going to Kansas City at t- 32. I get like, <laughs> do you guys think Chop Robinson is a first round pick? This is fascinating to me that Chop Robinson now is j- in everybody's, he's in the last five of the first round in every mock draft I look at that the edge rusher out of Penn State. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, there's nobody that gets off the ball better than Chop, but I don't know that he turns into a, in every down defensive end. No, no. I, I, I look. I think defensive ends, defensive players, like there are so few that 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 can play down in and down out. Right. Like obviously linemen. You know, you do that all the time. Teams rotate in and out. Okay, cool. But but when I, like the Aaron Donalds of the world don't just fall off trees, bro. You don't just have guys who who are just made to play football no, like that. I agree with that. And and so you look at the draft that. and it's like, yeah, you can draft defensive end, but again, defensive schemes are are getting more and more complex. So I only say that because you if you're going to draft a defensive end, it, it damn well better be a player who can move around quite a bit. Yeah. Like it can't just yeah. be a guy who gets you a couple sacks a season and kind of hangs out over there to which I say, those guys are pretty rare to which I then say, okay, great. Go out and improve your wide receiver room and then figure out the, the defensive line. Because if you can score with anybody, you're in every game. Totally agree. Uh, Jimmy Atson, Jimmy. Whoa! Whoa! <clears throat> Bo Nix has been playing college ball since 1952. <laughs> Jimmy. I uh, can't wait too long to play him if you draft him. That's very true. That's true. Uh, Delaric says Vikings only hope to get top pick is trade uh, two first round picks in Jefferson to Arizona. The hard part is I think you're in a terrible spot with with Kyler Murray. You, you, I mean, he's got, a, I think, the third largest cap hit in the NFL of $51 yes. million, dollars, and he has not been productive. But he's that classic situation of if you're the Cardinals – you know, you're either going to ride or die with Kyler and just be okay with the shortcomings, or you're going to take another step back, trade him, and and be that top five pick in the draft team that you've been. I think you have Which to, and if you're the Cardinals, I think you have to ride with little Kyler and you have to continue to restructure that deal. Yeah. Just keep going back to the bank because you have to. Yeah. Tanner, if the Bears win the NFC, will you grow a mullet money? I will not. Boston Mapes, only one of this year's QBs will be serviceable. So, so which will it be? I think it's Caleb Williams because he's got by far the best skill set. Yeah. I think Bo Nix is a bust. I think Free Harbaugh just does not have the 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 it factor to play in the NFL. Um, I look at some of the other guys. I mean, my guy all along has been Big Penix Energy. I think he's the best quarterback in the draft. Yeah. Um, arm talent wise, it's Caleb Williams. Uh mentality wise, toughness wise. Mental toughness wise, I think it's big Penix. Yeah, I do totally agree. Uh, Pratt from Tulane is going to be a good pick for some team. Way under the radar, absolutely could be right. Lee Jensen, hello. I hope everyone's weekend was nice. Eh, eh. Also, ants amazing. You shut your mouth, Monty, yeah, Monty. To all ten people who have sent me the ant dunk. Hey, you're, Monty, that's Monty, so did funny. you see the ant dunk, Monty? You dub fan Jim. Everyone but Monty thinks Rome is amazing. I don't think he's amazing. I think he's solid. I think he's a good, not great receiver. The NFL level, he's not breaking anybody off. No. And I think, I, hey, maybe I'm wrong. I think Roma Dunze is a good third or fourth wide receiver on a team. Potentially could be really good in the slot, in my opinion. He's a little bit smaller. So you throw him in the slot, let that athleticism eat a little bit, and, you know, yeah. And listen, there's a lot of money being made by seven-yard crossing route wide receivers in this league. Yes. But he's never, you know, I heard one guy on on the radio yesterday talk about how he is the next Tyreek Hill. He's no. not. Because he's not that fast. He doesn't have that explosiveness. He is a really good 
wide receiver at what he does well is he is open. He creates gap. Yes. And I, I'm good with that. But you're not, he he does nothing that is special or unique. He does nothing that is like, good wow. Lord, I've got to have it. Yeah. He's not Malik Neighbors. I don't, I, I think both of the wide receivers from LSU are better. I think Marvin Harrison's better. Like, I think there's a lot of wide receivers in this class. I, I, I really do. I think I would take Xavier Worthy. 100%. He had bigger body, and he has breakaway speed. And not speed in the straight line. You watch him play football, and he is just faster than you. Mm-hmm. He, you're, he's gone before you ever think about it. And that's why I say, like, if you're the Bears, if the Bears were a pop-off, and let's say draft Xavier Worthy at, you know, what, what is it, nine they have? I think is that second one. Yes. Like, I would be okay with that because at least then I understand. Okay, cool. You're trying to add generational talent to your offense to support Caleb Williams. Totally get it, dude. Totally understand it. You need to start building that chemistry with those guys as soon as possible. So I understand. But that's that's why I say the Bears situation, It just it's not going to be fixed until you have an offensive-minded guy running the team who understands how to fully use Caleb Williams. And I think somebody is going to get a great wide receiver and Xavier Worthy in the middle of the second round. Yeah. Because I think that's where he goes. Could be wrong. Uh, Xavier will fall to the second round, unfortunately, due to many wide receivers in the draft. FSU defensive tackle Fisky looks like he will be a good one. Mm -hmm. Uh, Tanner Plumer, uh, last mock draft I saw at Worthy in the second round, but we'll see. I think you're right. Um, you don't take wide receiver in the first round. Totally disagree. I think there's there's a handful. Uh, Chidote won how to do. Uh, Hello. Okay. Monty, I know Kendall Gill and Kenny Battle. Lived in Illinois in fourth grade in 89 during the Illini dominance. Man, those Boom. were the years where he was taking, Kenny Battle was taken down backboards. Uh, UW fan Jim Malik Neighbors is electric. Roma Dunze is a monster. Roma Dunze is not a monster. No. I understand that you like him and you're a UW fan. He's not a monster. He, he's just he, a solid NFL player. He's not like top end, amazing talent. And the thing that I think a lot of people don't like Marvin Harrison Jr. If you're, if you think Marvin Harrison Jr. is just a name, <laughs> like I question how much have you watched Marvin Harrison Jr. route run? Like how much have you watched his big game performances? Like, Roma Dunze is not a bad player. Nobody says he's a bad player. He's got decent size. Yeah. He is a guy that, in my opinion, is, is he's good. He's not elite. And and there's a lot of guys that he ran a 4-4-5. Four, four, That's okay. You, you're not. You're not elite. I, I don't know why this is. He's just solid. He's a solid player, man. It's as simple as that. He, he's a solid player that will probably be very reliable with catches. Like he's a, he's a good route runner who knows how to create a little space. But what is his best? What is his highest best skill? The difficult catch. He makes body catches. He yeah. is. He's not a monster. I mean, the, the, he has good size. He has good. He has. I he, feel like he elite play, ball skill, but he's got good skills. I, I feel like he's like a. You know, uh, Kadarius Tony of sorts, except a better catcher of the football and a smarter player. You know, he's that guy that that's never going to be seventy yards down the field, but he's going to be eight yards coming across, and he's going to be a possession type wide receiver where he's never going to light it up, right? He's never going to go down the field, but he'll be right there for you. And if you can hit him on the crosser, you're going to be productive. And I think a lot of people make the point that. He has a chance to be a very good wide receiver because he's got elite ball skill, but he does not possess. Like everybody talks about the fact that he was an unbelievable sprinter in, in high school. Right. And this is one of those things that I think a lot of people fail to understand. Like just because I can run in a straight line from point A to point B very fast, which he did not do at the combine, by the way, he did that in high school. I don't see him as a guy that's running away from the best corners in, in football. No. 
I think he has got the size and the ball skill to be a, a very good wide receiver. He's never going to be the best wide receiver on his team. And if he is, you're not going to win a lot of games. Totally agree. That's a great way to say it. He doesn't stop. Not terrible. No. But he's also not a superstar over the top guy. I just don't know why it has to be, you know, this boom or bust thing. Do you know how many draft picks are just good core players on your roster? Mm -hmm. And there's real value in that. There's real value in a guy that can catch a football in traffic at the back of the end zone. There's real value in a guy that can make a tight play against the sideline. He's going to do that. Yes. But. He's not going to be, again, Hill. He's not going to be worthy. Like, Xavier Worthy's that guy that he's he's that guy on a motorcycle and you're trying to catch him in a car. Uh-huh. Right? Like, you're just he's not. He's faster. Yeah. I, I just think it is. It'll be interesting to see how how it all play out. But that's I, what I say. Like, if you're in the top 10, like, I, I, I don't know. Like, it's obviously situational. But I, I would have no issue if a team like the Bears popped off you know, whether it was Xavier Worthy or Dunze or whatever the case may be, whoever their guy is that they covet and they want, I would be okay with that because at least then I know, okay, you're 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 trying to light the fire here. You're trying to give Caleb Williams as much as possible to work with. I'm cool with that. That to me, that's very different than drafting Free Harbaugh to be your franchise quarterback. And that's where I think, you know, teams tend to get a little confused and tend to uh, be more data driven than they should be. They want to look at, hey, what'd you do in college? What's the piece of paper say? Versus saying, okay, well, what's our situation? And what would we actually be asking you to do? And I think with Roma Dune say, the last thing I'll say is that the thing that worries me the most is I think he believes he's not fast. Because if you are if you are fast, you don't get into the physical battles he tries to get into. And I think he is fast enough at the college level to create that gap. My question is, and I think most people probably know this, but do you understand how much better coverage is in the NFL? <laughs> do you understand how much faster NFL corners are, how much more developed, how much more skilled they are? He's not somebody that wants to try and run that go route. He would much rather stop at 10, 12 yards and fight you for the football. And in the yeah. NFL, that takes time. Yes. It doesn't mean he's a bad wide receiver. It, it, it doesn't. Uh, Rome is another Michael Thomas, mad, solid wide receiver. Yeah, but that's about it. That's about it. Yeah, and the injuries have just, again, just eaten dude's career. Yep. Bears trading Justin Fields is pure stupidity. I think it's brilliant. I don't think it's stupidity. I think that's what they had to do. I'd love them to see, him, see, to see them do it two years ago. Like, just move on from him. Yep. Chrissy, Adunze is a 50-50 possession ball hawk. Throw the ball to him, and he will out physical the DB in college. Yeah, but are you out? Like, who's the Bears' best cover corner? Jalen Johnson. You're not out physicaling Jalen Johnson mm -hmm. at the point. You're not. You're not doing that. Like, I, I think if you look at the the corners in the NFL now, there is a real chance that depending on where he ends up, he's not getting the best corner coverage, right? Because you, you probably have it. Like, if the Bears end up with a Dunze. You're putting you're putting your better corner on more. You're putting your better corner on Keenan, so he would probably get your nickel. So I'm saying he's a, he's a slot receiver that that can that can be productive. I mean, again, look at you know you want to compare him to Tyree Kill. That's fine. Look at how Tyree Kill operates though. He's not out wide most of the time. They bunch him in in close to the line so that they can yeah. get creative. And I think guys like Roma Dunze. Are, are again, you, you know, you've got strength, you've got football IQ, you understand how to make plays inside like that. And and if you can do that, you have big value on a team. You don't always have to be, you know, four, three, five, 40 guy. And I, I do wish, I do wish he was faster. Yeah. If Roma Dunze was a four, three guy, okay, now he's willing to run that go route, right? But he's too often, in my opinion, He's he wants he's likes to fight guy. Yes. And if you're likes to fight guy in the NFL with corners and physical safeties, and that's just not how you become an elite wide receiver. I, Tyree Kill got paid for one reason because a guy runs. The guy is absolutely a cheetah. He runs. Right. And I, and I, again, 
I'm not saying, and UW fan Jim, I'm sure, is losing his mind. Uh-huh. Uh, you just made that up, Monty. Rome runs all the routes. The fuck he does. Dude. No, he does not. Yeah, what do you mean he runs Ru- all the routes? He, he, he is. So you're telling me that you believe that we will see him in the NFL run sideline go routes or that we'll see him run posts up the, the hash. No, we will not because that's not who he is. And when you're four four five in the NFL, you're not faster than linebackers. Yeah. Do you understand that four four five in the NFL is not linebacker? You're not fast enough at four four five to to be a cover linebacker in this league. Do you understand that four four five is safety speed? Four three is corner speed. Yeah. Four two one with Xavier Worthy. That's fast. Rome is not a guy that's going to win a track meet. That's just not who he is. And well, Monty, he had all the deep balls in college. Well, why do you think that is, dude? Why Why do you think that is? Yeah, I, that's I right. think the coverage isn't as good. I think it's why he's not a great run blocker because that's just not what he is, right? If Roma Dunze wants to take this big step up, yeah, he better show me he wants to run block. Right, because it's you can don't tell me you're going to argue somehow that he's this amazing run blocker. He is not. He is not an amazing run blocker. He is somebody that would rather battle you for the ball that's in the air at ten yards than try to outrun you and make a catch at seventeen to twenty yards. Absolutely. I, I, and I don't even know how we're arguing. How are we arguing this? He's he's just not that guy. He isn't. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, a Dune say didn't out physical DBs with air. No, but his ball skills. The thing with Roma Dune say, like, are we talking about the same guy? Yeah, I'm surprised. What that the we're, fuck are yeah. we doing? Do you understand that this guy has e- Roma Dune say has elite ball skill, which means when the ball is in the air, he is going to put his hands on it and make a catch before you can. He is going to out battle. He has got good size. He doesn't have elite size. He's got good size. What is he? Six three. Mm-hmm. He's got a, a, a elite ball skill in a good body, and he's not a track star. He's not a four three four two guy, right? So he would rather stop a route at the top at 10, 12 yards, fight a guy because he's going to out ball skill you in the air, right? He's going to he's got better. He's yeah. going to catch balls in traffic. He, he's just a really good catcher of the football. But in no circumstance is he running. 35 yard go routes. In no circumstance is he using his ability to run block. Those are clear weaknesses. He is not, Roma Dunze is not an effort guy. Mm-hmm. He is not. He is somebody that is comfortable. He would rather battle somebody in a shorter route than run down the field, and he's not going to be an elite run blocker. That's right, T. Unless he somehow develops this incredible want to. I, I just don't understand why we. How, like, why do we story tell about how good this guy is? Because I think what 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 people like to do is they like to say, "Oh, well, we played at Washington, and it was Penix, and it was the Penix, you know, the Dunze connection, and you know, all those deep balls." And it's like, yeah, dude, in college you can do that. In college, you're going to be able to run by the corner and probably out physical the safety. Do you guys understand it? In college, skill is more important than effort. Yes, efforts for the guy who's not as skilled as you are. When you're as skilled as Roman Dunze is, you don't have to make all of that effort. You you look at his numbers in college, 92 for 1640. He, he is a guy that had a long of 52. So if he's a monster, how is his long 52 yards? Jalen Polk, 1,159 yards, 92 yard long. Yes. Roma Dunze beats you. Because he's going to catch balls that m- most wide receivers in difficult situations will not. But again, I just point to you and I look at his run blocking. I look at overall, like I, I, we're spending way too much time on Roma, Roma Dunze now. Like it, it, this is this is wild. But this is the type of stuff that I legitimately believe happens in NFL war rooms, where where they're like, like you got one guy saying, hey. The Dunze is God and deep route guy and everything. And then you get another guy who's actually talking logic. And this is, and then you wind up drafting him way too high. Draft experts don't agree with you. Well, funny. Let's read Daniel Jeremiah's 
draft synopsis of Roma Dunze, which is available at Jim, NFL.com. Jim, you're getting in over your head now, dude. You what were, do you think? I just make shit up. Do yeah. you not think that I watch tape and fucking read what everybody else is saying? Do you really think, Jim, like this is where this is where I'm going to enjoy beating the. Yeah. Daniel Jeremiah, because draft experts don't agree with me, carries the frame and play strength for an NFL wide receiver. Wide receiver one lacks rare speed. Well, fuck, according to Jim and. and UW fan Jim, he's just this burner who runs down the field. Lacks rare speed, but should be considered a playmaker. Good separation talent. Yeah, he's he he has gap ability. Yeah, they totally disagree with me. Early eyes on the football to find positioning. All-star ball winner, magnificent body control. You know, they fucking disagree with me everywhere, right? Well, let's why don't we move on to his weaknesses? Why don't we move on to his weaknesses? Because, you know, I don't know anything, and all the draft experts disagree with me on Roma Dunze. Rushes through early stages of his double move, gradual uptight and gradual into top of the routes on comebacks. So he, he doesn't want to sell a deep route, right? Attention to detail is missing from his routes. Too content taking 50-50 battles rather than operating at top speed. Did I not just say he'd rather battle you yeah. at 10 to 12, 15 yards than go down the field? But they disagree with me. Room for greater effort is a run blocker. Yeah, they, I mean, they told, I don't know, man. Dude, Would I should just. Mind, can you I, stop making stuff I'm just going to, I'm going to, I, I shouldn't do the show because <laughs> I don't know shit about the NFL draft. I'm just going to walk away. Yeah, they, the draft experts disagree with you, Monty. About what? I, I'm, I'm yeah, sorry. I mean, Somebody literally... educate. I'm young little Monty over here. Somebody educate me. Somebody educate me. Good Lord. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Draft experts disagree with you. He's this burner that runs. No, he's not. He's a 4 4 5 guy. No, no, he's not. Never. What is he saying there? Never said that. Never said that. Lie. Oh, okay. So you never said that. I don't know what I'm, I, 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 bro. It's right. Draft experts disagree with you. What are you talking about? Did you watch Husky's play? No, I don't watch football. So, there, there it is. Do you even watch Husky? So football? now you're lying about a Dunze. You don't watch Husky football, and the draft experts allegedly oh. disagree with you. Jim, it's okay to say you're wrong, dude. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> Anyway, Jesus. Uh, nobody's taking Worthy over a Dunze. No, he's nobody's taking Worthy over a Dunze. I think a Dunze is probably top half of the first round. Now, Worthy's that guy you want to add to an already good wide receiver core so you can have a guy that goes over the top to open it up for dudes like a Dunze 15 now, yards down the field. I would rather have Xavier Worthy on the Chicago Bears as currently constructed than Roma Dunze because the Bears, with Moore and Allen, have really good veteran wide receivers. Give me a young thoroughbred who can run down the field. Absolutely. Give me a young thoroughbred who can run a crossing route and sprint away from you. Yeah. Which he showed he was a lead at. A lead at it. A lead at it. Uh, Xavier Worthy has speed. Yes, he does. The panic says everyone likes and share the Monty show. Exactly right. Yeah. Uh, hey, playa, I trust you and I appreciate you. Ah, oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, I'll take Worthy any day over your guy. I think Xavier Worthy is going to be – it'll be interesting to see what he turns into because a lot of people compare him to like a Plaxico Burris. Mm -hmm. I'm curious what he turns into. It's very situational, dude. He's got to – if he to ever see the top end on his career, he's got to get into the right situation because if he gets into a run-heavy offense, that's going to be tough for him. And, and, yeah. and, you know, obviously a run-heavy team – is probably not looking to draft Xavier Worthy, but you get my point. I mean, much like quarterbacks, wide receivers, you know, need opportunities. So yeah. for him, yeah. I just hope he gets to a good spot. Yeah, it'll be interesting. I am, uh, I am, I am excited to see what the Bears are going to do. I think you're going to probably take Caleb Williams one, and I hope to the end of my days that you take the best edge or linebacker available. And I hope it's Dallas Turner because I'm a big believer in Dallas Turner. 
that's me. Pew, pew, Plexico. Yeah, he dropped. Do you guys remember that? Plexico <laughs> allegedly said what he said. Uh, Plaxico had a alleged uh, pew, pew in his waistband. Yeah. Of um, his sweatpants um, at a club. And the the gun pew, pew thing fell out of his waistband. Off, let it go off then. <laughs> it hit the ground and shot him in the thigh. Yeah. Shot him in the thigh. Unbelievable. Uh, wow, it's, we don't even have time to talk about Texas pulling out or Pornhub pulling out of Texas. <laughs> well, you probably don't. You probably don't know anything about this because you know you don't. You don't even watch. I am not a no, believer of pornography. Watch, you know. I'm not. Uh, yeah. Is we don't even have time to talk about how stupidly expensive and how it's trash. We played True North in Scottsdale over the weekend. Yeah. And it's per person on the worst screens I've seen this year. Like all marked pothole, terrible greens. Yeah. No marshals on the course. Guys hitting two, three. In this, we played two rounds. Routinely, no marshals on the course in Scottsdale. Guys dropping two, three balls at a time, hitting two, three shots at a time with 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 two sums, three sums, four sums lined up behind us, just dropping. It was so bad on Sunday that we. It was a single player in front of us, four in front of him, two of us, one behind him, and the guy that was single in front of us quit because it was taking so long and there were no marshals. Yeah, brutal golf in Scottsdale. Maybe yeah. we'll detail it more tomorrow. We will. Yeah, we will. We will. We will. Uh, the Monty Show is always presented by our good friends at The Advocates, theadvocates.com. Always up for a good feisty, my receiver's better than I think he is. Sorry. Well, I'm glad we were able to add to the ledger of things you don't watch. I mean, yeah, I don't really, watch. That's right. Yeah. I don't I don't yeah. watch Husky football. Yeah. And Roma Dunce runs like 4-2-10. Yeah. yeah. Like he just runs. He runs a 4-2, 100-yard dash. Yeah. hundred, yeah. Not 40. He runs a 4-2. Well, and all the draft experts disagree with you. So, you know, maybe tonight you can read up more, okay? Thanks, man. Thanks. The Advocates at theadvocates.com. Until tomorrow, say goodbye, Jake. Goodbye, Jake.